faces of the families of the drivers getting ready to go 500 miles 188 laps it's NASCAR on Fox live from Alabama. Yeah, I Hi, I'm Rhett Rayburn, GEICO's Southeast Regional Vice President. On behalf of 35,000 associates and over 15 million policyholders, it's my privilege to welcome you to the GEICO 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. We've thoroughly enjoyed our 17-year relationship with NASCAR and its amazing fans, so it's a privilege to bring you today's race. So sit back, relax, and let's go racing. Eric Almirola starting 22nd today. He started 23rd yesterday in the Xfinity race, getting a helping hand before he gets rolling. In fact, two of the last three winners, restrictor plate races here, have come from the rear of the field. And there is Martin Truex Jr. He leads everybody with five stage wins. He has one win when he won in Las Vegas. He only got a drive for the cycle. The Trifecta to win all the stages and win in the race. Jimmy Johnson starting all the way back at 30th, but a two time winner so far this season. Kyle Larson is your points leader, and he has one win, but amazingly, he's the only driver who has won from the pole. Larson also has four second place finishes to go with his victory, and his teammates for Chip Ganassi racing off to a great start, Jamie McMurray. Well, Joe Gibbs Racing swept the month of April 
last season they have no win so far this season. Joey Logano has a win that was encumbered off of last week. Let's see which driver does the best today. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, Assistant Vice President of Southeast Claims for GEICO, Frank Pickering. Drivers, start your engines! Tenth race of the NASCAR season. Seven different winners over the first nine. The only repeat winners, Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski, to take us through today. Already enjoying the weather outdoors. Here's Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. Thanks, Chris, and hi, everybody. These restricted races where the engines are restricted, the drivers have to keep it flat on the floor all day long, long freight train-like drafts, cars coupled together, three, four tracks wide, and those tracks are very close together. <laughs> Danica Patrick described Talladega as crazy, fast, and risky. Has it ever been anything but? <laughs> no, Mike, I started my first race here 45 years ago. And that day, I'll never forget, I was worried about one thing, the big one. Today, these drivers start this race and they're worried about one thing, the big one. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. A full grandstand behind us, and Jeff, you've won more restrictor plate races in all of NASCAR history than any other driver. But when you stepped out of the cockpit to join us in the broadcast booth, you said this is one place you won't miss quite so much. I like the stress level up here. It's pretty good. It's manageable. You know, the stress level doesn't start for these drivers when they climb in the car. It started this morning when they woke up. There's just so many things that can go wrong in a race like today. And you want to control your own destiny, but you know you can't. But I think how you manage that stress and throw fear to the side, I think that's the driver that's going to have a better shot at having a great race today. Expect bold moves, and it could be a driver with long odds. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the favorite, but the favorite here goes off at 8-1. to one. Jimmy Johnson, Keselowski, Logano, that Penske team has won the last three in a row here. You want a long shot? Yesterday's winner, Eric Almirola, might be your pick at 50-1. to one. Timing is everything in Teledex. Hang on, folks. It's going to get a little rowdy here. No. Are you kidding me? Oh, over. Whoa, whoa, oh, no. Where did he go? Oh, no. no. Here we go, guys. The big one.
Look at that infield. It is packed. It is sold out due to the party nature here of Talladega. Welcome to Fox coverage of the Geico 500. Sellout infield. Nice grandstand crowd as well. How big is NASCAR's biggest track? Well, our last four racetracks that we've been to would comfortably fit on the property here. Texas, the one super speedway, and the three-quarter mile at Richmond, the half miles at Bristol and Martinsville would fit comfortably in this infield. The banking here is the steepest in NASCAR, a 48-foot racing surface and a 26-foot elevation. Well, that's a three-story house, folks. And they'll fill that track from the double yellow line that indicates out of bounds all the way up to the outside wall. Here's a look at the starting grid. Ford on the pole for the first time since 2008, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and the Pied Piper of Talladega, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in row number one. Brad Keselowski, a Ford, Matt Kenseth's Toyota in row number two. Trevor Bain, a Daytona winner, and Kevin Harvick, both Fords in the third row. Well, we are in Earnhardt country. This is Dale, <laughs> our outside pole yeah. sitter. Dale Jr., this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, four, loud and clear. And you're so successful here at Restrictor Plate Races, especially at Talladega. Uh, this is such a mental race. What is your mindset going into this Restrictor Plate Race? And has that changed at all, knowing that this is one of your best chances to get in the playoffs in your final season? Well, it, you guys will explain it later today, but the strategy for these places has changed quite a bit since the stages have been introduced. So you're going to see some things at these plate races that are going to look different as far as how the, the race is called for the pit box. And I think we're all sort of trying to figure out, as a driver, you know, what, how you play into that and take advantage of, take advantage of that new system or that new strategy. So it'll be interesting today to see how all that works out. And we're just gonna run hard, try to lead, and try to be up front. I know the best place and the safest place to be is out front. Hey, June Bug, it's uh, DW. Hey, man, Junior Nation, they are all excited about uh, your chances for a win today. Everybody wants to know, is the car happy and is Junior happy? I'm ready to go. Uh, we didn't get much practice, so uh, the car, uh, we, 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 we know it's fast because it qualified well, but we don't know how it really is going to handle it. And I know handling is not necessarily always a factor here, but you can see this track's grayed up quite a bit. So it's kind of returning to its old self. We've had some balance issues that have cropped up in the last couple of trips here. So we'll be looking at that today and make sure we got the car driving the way it needs to drive so we can be as aggressive as we can. All right, my friend. Well, that noise you're going to hear today is uh, when you're out there leading that race from all these folks up here in the grandstand. So have a great afternoon, buddy. Thank you, man. Dale Earnhardt Jr. starting on the outside pole. Let's take a look at how Daniel Suarez of the Joe Gibbs Racing number 19 is starting with confidence today. Brought to you by Carfax. His Monster Energy Series debut was at Daytona in the Daytona 500. Daytona's the other restrictor plate track in NASCAR. He had a speeding penalty. He missed his pit stall, got caught up in a crash, and finished 29th. But that was his first race in this series. Since then, he's had a lot of repetitions. This is his 10th start. So experience and repetitions are why Suarez is starting with confidence today. Brought to you by Carfax. Let's get down to pit road and get late breaking stories. All the way from the spotter stand back to pit road goes Jamie Little. Well, hi, Mike. One of the feel-good stories of this year has been the speed of the Roush Fenway cars, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in particular, and he proved that here this weekend, capturing his second career pole. Now he just needs to get that first career win. While the other Fords have taken note of that speed, you can count on all 10 Fords hooking up together, trying to stay up front and bring it home for a victory. Vince? 
Talladega is fast, it's stressful, and it's dangerous. Not many handle those elements better than Brad Keselowski. He won this race a year ago, and he told me that when you wake up the morning of Talladega, you feel different. It's nonstop stress. When racing here, Brad says he feels like a daredevil. But with four wins, I'd say it's closer to Talladega superhero. Matt Yoakum. Vince, execution today is crucial, not only for the guys who go over the wall here for Clint Boyer, but also for the driver himself. A mistake on this side of the wall or out on the race or even entering pit road can turn your day upside down. Go back to Daytona. Boyer had to call an audible on strategy because he flat spotted his tires. He also lost his drafting group. No mistakes today if he wants to become the first driver to win in a Toyota, a Chevy, and a Ford. Chris Neville. Well, typically Daytona and Talladega are playgrounds for the veterans. In the last 10 years, only Trevor Bain and Brad Keselowski won prior to their 100th Cup career start. Well, Chase Elliott, he's looking to add his name to that list. He came close last year, and he was just a couple laps shy at the Daytona 500. His plan today, get to the front quick and control the pack. Larry? Chris, a crew chief's job here can be very interesting today because fresh tires does not do a whole lot for that car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. touched on it. Strategy with stage racing. Keep fuel in that car, win the stage, and win the race can be very interesting in these 500 miles. Let's take a look at our Geico race analysis now. 500 miles, 188 laps, those first two stages. 55 laps, the final stage, 78 laps. Ever important pit road speed, 55 miles per hour, and the fuel window, 44 to 48 laps. To the rear for unapproved tire change, Brendan Gaughan in the 75 car. And Mike, the weatherman, what a NASCAR fan he is today. Look at that, 70 degrees, sunny, and just a slight breeze. And the weatherman knocked it out of the park today. Well done. There is one big difference at Talladega between here and Daytona, where the start-finish line would be back up there. When Bill France built this track, he wanted those seats down toward turn one to be saleable, so the start-finish line is well down toward the first corner. Jamie McMurray leading here in the middle of the trioval at Daytona. He would have been the winner, but at the line at Talladega, Kevin Harvick went to victory lane. Similar situation here. Clint Boyer in the 33. Look down on the inside comes Jimmy Johnson with drafting help from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Johnson got the win. That's a difference of 1,250 feet from the center of the trioval to the start finish line. And at Talladega, that is a very important difference. Wow, what a big crowd on hand here. Here's Joey Logano's team. Tell you what, this place is packed today. I know it, I saw that, it looks great. South Nega. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it Junior or, or Charlie Daniels or the weather that brought in all these folks? Man, this is an awesome crowd. Charlie had a big crowd last night, I can tell you, put on heck of a show. Woo. They love their racing here, and fans come here to expect the unexpected. Ricky Stenhouse in a board. Dale Earnhardt, Chevrolet, bring them into the center of the trioval and into that final 1,200 feet to the start-finish line. Mike, this is a big track. This is a big deal. So today, folks, we're going to send these guys off. Boogity, 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 boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Stenhouse has speed. He leads lap one. Dale Earnhardt Jr., though, forges ahead on the outside, going into turn one. I was going to say, I don't know if he's going to lead lap two. Dale Jr. got a, a great big push there. They're already three wide through, the, through one and two here on lap two. It's funny how it works, though. You can get up to that guy, but getting around him or getting in front of him, well, that's a whole different challenge. That's the first lap Stenhouse has led this season. Look at this. Looks like slot cars. Sort of. 
<laughs> three wide will become routine today. Look at Junior get down. I, I, don't you love Junior? Automatically down on the door of that 17, trying to get a little of that side draft. Well, he wants to get control of this race as soon as he can. Look at, you see, Chase Elliott's going to make a move to the inside, kind of snooker Kenseth there. Kenseth on the outside in the 20. Lap two. Stenhouse by one one hundredth of a second. Oh, we got a problem with Denny Hamlin down below the yellow line. And that is out of bounds. Hamlin dropping to the apron. And he may lose the draft before he gets back around. Now that may have been a strategic move. He just wanted wow. to go down there and fall to the back. Maybe he didn't like what he saw. And I don't blame him. Look at this. Sort of a Chevy Ford battle right now. The two Fords on the bottom, the two Chevys up on the outside. But now the 21 is in behind the 88. Yeah, there's, there's actually four Fords in a row there. If you go back behind Stenhouse, so a lot of Ford contingent there up front right now. Here comes Junior on the left trying to get the lead. At the start of the race, you see Danica Patrick give David Reagan the boot there. Yeah, that I'd be concerned about what kind of damage that may have done to the inlet there for the radiator and cooling such an important aspect of this race. Well, one thing I'm seeing right away here, Mike and Jeff, that inside is the way to go. Dale Jr. can get up there, he can get the momentum on the outside, but he just can't get the pass. Well, DW, look how they're already three wide. So that third lane is actually moved, the one moving, that's gonna break up that line that Jr. Is, is leading. Stenhouse back to the bottom. The green car, new sponsor for Brad Keselowski. Oh, I love and the that. Penske number two. Love that move right there by Kyle Busch. He comes from the bottom lane, jumps up into the middle lane. Right now, you think that uh, Ricky Stenhouse is Brad Keselowski's best friend? You just wait till somebody gets a little challenge and he'll go with them. Stenhouse back to the stripe, retaining the lead. Now, Denny Hamlin still at speed, but in the back of the pack. Jamie? Well, that was definitely by design. Denny just decided he wanted to drop down and stay in the back, stay out of trouble, and he got hooked down there on the bottom. So he's all alone back there, lost the draft completely. Haven't we seen this before from Denny? And it didn't work out so well. A number of drivers have tried that strategy with mixed results, as you say. Well, and did Dale Earnhardt Jr. give us a little insight to the pit strategy that's going to be played out by more than just those Joe Gibbs Toyotas that we saw happen in Daytona. They came very early in the Daytona 500 under green flag conditions, and I think that maybe he's going to hook up with his teammates on pit road if they decide to pull that same strategy. Yeah. I just don't like that outside line. It's not going anywhere. Guys, I'm watching Denny Hamlin's lap times that 11 car, at least compared to the leaders, I think, because they're so jumbled up, it's not really hurting him. He's still in touch with the draft. Oh, yeah, he's catching right back up there. He's behind a seven car right now, and they are pushing their way right back up to the back of that pack. Well, so, and Larry, if, he, if they only run maybe 12 to 15 laps here before they come to pit, you know, that he's not going to get that far behind. And actually, there's an advantage getting on pit road when you're not in the middle of a big pack. Yeah, the window opens to get to the end of stage one here in about eight to eight to ten whoa, laps. Well, now three oh. I can handle four. I don't know. Look at Bain. He's caught in a trap. And Ryan Blaney, the 21 moving up four wide. Dylan on the outside. Blaney, then Trevor Bain in the six. Paul Menard in the 27. There's plenty of room for that here. But they're going almost 200 miles an hour. Yeah, you just can't, you know, I, you remember what I told you last year when we were here? A guy second guessing another guy second guessing another guy? That's what you do. There is plenty of room for four wide here, but this is also when incidents happen and cause that big wreck. When you do get four wide, you can be there for a few laps. You don't want to be there lap after lap. Great aerial coverage. Thanks to Goodyear. Jimmy Johnson moving up in the 48. Did not qualify well in time trials yesterday. Started 30th. Biggest movers through the field. Well, David Reagan, Eric Almarola, two fellows we looked at as long shots, but certainly contenders today. They lead that list with Johnson Blaney and Cole Witt. You think about Amarola. He won the race here yesterday, and he is a really, really good restrictor plate racer. Here comes Logano to the outside, trying to make something happen up front. Yeah, maybe we can see this guy's long shots. Look at this shot from behind Adele Earnhardt Jr. to Joey Logano. He knows Logano is one of the best out there on a restrictor plate track. He, I wouldn't be surprised if you see those two get connected and go to the front. I love Logano. If there is an opening, he never hesitates. He goes for it. Kevin Harvick to the outside in front of Logano. And 
And you may ask yourself, why do these drivers choose that middle lane? Why take that risk? Well, a lot of times, that's the only lane that opens up that the drivers up you know, in front on those inside lanes, outside lanes, well, they'll leave a little bit of a gap there in the middle, and there's actually something that happens in the turbulent air that allows you to get a little bit extra speed through that middle lane. Whoa, man, Junior in the, in the 22 of Logano, whoa, they were tight. Man, they, they were company. tight. Here comes in Chase Elliott, way up the outside, and he's got help from Kyle Larson, the 42, and, and Jamie McMurray, Larson's teammate. Just don't like where. Junior just can't find the right spot right now. He's falling back. He's in that center, uh, in that middle lane. You know, whatever happened, they really stalled the momentum of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Watch it take him about a half a lap to get that momentum going. Watch this, Jeff. Watch the outside line there. Watch, it, watch, it, watch Logano and uh, oh, wow. yeah, right there. I think Junior had a little run and he had to get out of the gas game, run over Logano, and it cost him momentum. Yeah, and, and Chase Elliott at the same time had some momentum from a push behind him and had to go three wide to the outside of Junior. Reed Sorensen's made a pit stop. Ricky Stenhouse has led every one of nine laps so far. Hold your breath. We're at Talladega. The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Ricky Stenhouse has led all 12 laps from the pole in a Ford. So here's today's Ford performance track facts. Team Penske's won the last three in a row here and four of the last five. Davey Allison got his first career win in the Cup Series here. One of the Alabama gang drivers, that was 1987 in this race. Ford's currently in positions one through four, Vince. And Brad Keselowski is running second. Brad working without his normal crew chief, Paul Wolf, today serving a suspension. So Brian Wilson, a former engineer for this team and also former Xfinity Series crew chief up on the box calling the shots, but told me it's an open mic of communication with Paul Wolf. So Wolf's still a major part of what's happening here. Right now, Brad says the handling isn't as good as he'd like it. It's a four loose on a 10 scale. So I know we say that handling's not huge here at Talladega, but four loose can't feel all that comfortable these speeds a little bit of a breezy day look at the nose of Ricky Stenhouse's car might he have picked up a piece of paper or something yes right there in the grill opening yeah, and he's going to give up the
trash on a grill, trash on a grill. Hit your location. Oh. And he, he oh, gave up the lane and tried to get that trash and it all, almost ran Harvick down below the yellow line. That got pretty hairy right there, but that is how important temperatures are. You cannot allow the car to get to overheat. Oh, Whoa, oh it bang, was, into the wall. Larson into the wall. Yes. Now, just prior to that, watch Chase Elliott in the 24, the Hooters car at the top center of the screen. But it's all the way up through there, Mike. Look at look at uh, Stenhouse trying to get down in behind the two car. He couldn't quite make it, and the four was there. Harvick covered the spot in the four, and Stenhouse backs up to fifth. This this this. Ooh. That looks like teammate. Yeah. Jamie McMurray gets the right rear quarter panel we, uh, uh, bumper. We saw some of this in Daytona. You just got to be really careful how you line up on that back straightaway if you're going to bump draft somebody and then actually turned his teammate in the outside wall. He's got some decent damage to the right side of that car as well. And he's these backing cars, up on the outside. Mike, these cars are hard to drive down that back straightaway. That's where they're really, really light. And if you touch the car in front of you wrong, you'll put him in that outside wall. Guys, we're here in stage one, and we're well beyond the fuel window to get to the end of stage one, which, of course, is 55 laps and the fuel window, 44 to 48 laps. But I almost suspect what might happen, like we saw at Daytona, they may try to split this stage in half. So I'm saying somewhere between lap 20 and 25, about five, six, seven laps from now, that's when we may see some teams try to get organized and come to pit road for at least right side tires and fuel. Thanks, Larry. And it looks like yeah, Larson going all the way to the back of the field. He may have brushed the wall as caution is out here. That had the look of a tire maybe going down on the right side of that car as he eases this thing up the hill. You can see sparks flying out from under the car like the tire right front tires down. Contact with the wall brings out the first caution, Matt. Mike, Derek Nealon, Larson spotter told him that there wasn't any smoke, but they kept keeping an eye on it. And Larson said that the tire did get cut down. That's why he's headed to pit road. Jeffrey Earnhardt will get the free pass. 17th lap of the race. Kyle Larson brings out the first caution, Larry. Yeah, there is no question. I think everybody will be to pit road for at least two tires of full fuel. But Mike, this can be a disaster because you're in the pit such a short amount of time. You're pulling out as other drivers are pulling in. I get a little nervous about a stop like this. Wow, good bit of damage on Larson's car. Pit road not yet open, but he is in for service because that's going to take a while. Jeff, how about today's AARP keys to the race? Yeah, Talladega is a very stressful race because you know, only there's so much you can keep in your control. You're battling three and four wide inches apart, trying your best to stay out of that big one. But your mindset must be positive. Don't defeat yourself before the green flag waves. Much of the momentum you need to complete a pass is behind you here at Talladega. So drivers will utilize their mirrors, maybe even more so than looking out the front windshield to pick and choose the best lane to advance their position. Not a lot of grip coming to pit road here, and it's really easy to lock those tires up on entry to pit road during green flag stops or even under caution coming into the pit box. So be clean on and off pit road to ensure you don't lose the draft and your chances will increase to win. Thanks, Jeff. Kyle Larson is on the five minute damaged vehicle clock. They've got to get that repaired and off pit road within five minutes to stay in this race. Kevin Harvick currently second had this to say about Ricky Stenhouse. I mean, I, I didn't know that the 17 was going to try to get back in there, Rodney. I mean, I would have more than happy let him in, but he was way out there and all of a sudden he just kept coming down. I didn't know what to do. I let off. I didn't know anything about it either. Nobody said anything. So, I mean, unless we know, we don't know what the hell is going on. So. Well, I know what almost went on. Disaster. They <laughs> right. avoided one there. Somebody had a plan, but nobody else knew about it. <laughs> pit road is open. Here comes everybody, Matt. Looking for the happy face. Kevin Harvick's guys are up on the wall. Could be some different strategies here. You're going to see it topping off with fuel on the four of green windshield. His partner goes away in the 14. Chris. Elliott running in the top five most of those 18 laps. First time he's had that car in the pack. He says it feels pretty good, but he just can't shove. Vince. Brad Keselowski in that two car just took fuel only. Jamie? 
and his teammate Joey Logano needed a little bit more grip. They put fuel in it, guys. No tires for Clint Boyer. The first uh, seven off pit road, no tires. So Boyer is the big gainer on pit stops. Ryan Newman, A.J. Allmendinger, and three others stayed out. under caution at Talladega all seven drivers who did not pit the first time by have now come to pit road so they can restart out back and hopefully out of harm's way Clint Boyer Kevin Harvick Brad Keselowski are your race leaders right now let's uh, check with Larry and get today's Liberty Mutual Insurance worry less strategy Mike we know crew chiefs get very aggressive with tape on the nose it hurts the aerodynamics we saw earlier our pole sitter Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at 17 having to work to get that trash off the grill and lost the lead by having to do it you can see it right there so where you don't have to worry about your gauges you don't have to worry about the water temperature you're busy enough in there what I did this morning is I pulled a little bit more tape off the grill opening but if you still see excessive water temp, let me know and I can remove a little bit more on the next pit stop. That's one way the crew chiefs help their drivers worry less at Talladega. So the five minute clock on Kyle Larson to get uh, repairs completed and back out. That is new this year. It's part of NASCAR's damaged vehicle policy. It applies to crash damage, not mechanical parts damage. Another thing that's new is stage racing. This race is run in three stages 
55, 55, and 78 laps. At the end of lap 55, the caution will wave and drivers will receive points for running in the top 10 at that point. The pits will open. You can make pit stops if you choose, and then we'll drop the green flag and begin stage two. So a three-stage race with uh, point-paying implications at the end of the first two stages and, of course, at the finish. Well, the most important thing we saw on that, uh, on that round of pit stops is fuel. You know, they couldn't make it all the way on fuel. Tires don't seem to be a big issue, but fuel certainly was, and they got a chance to top them up and go to the the uh, end of the stage. And when I look at the damage that the 42 had of Kyle Larson, I think he dodged a huge bullet. On the back straightaway when he got to the wall, I know he cut the tire down, but he could have really done significant damage when that tire went out. Uh, I think he's going to be fine and good to go. As long as they got the rubs uh, off of the, you know, those fenders off the tires and, and uh, keep them from rubbing, he's going to be fine here. So we're getting ready for the restart. We'll have 36 cars on the lead lap. Jeffrey Earnhardt was four laps down after a stop in the pits, so he'll get one of those back with the free pass. Brendan Gaughan and Corey LaJoy and Reed Sorensen also laps down in the early going here. Pace car will make the sharp left turn. There it goes, and they'll approach the Geico restart zone, coming to complete lap 21 of 55 in stage one. Clint Boyer leading for the first time this year, and we'll go back to green. Kyle Larson is back up to speed. The crash clock is off on the 42. And he'll continue as Clint Boyer leads his first green flag lap of the season. You know, Mike, I was so impressed with the job that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. did at the start of this race, uh, keeping that car up front. I know he had that problem with the trash on the grill, but look where he's at now. Now the work really begins. He's got to be patient. He's got to make smart moves, really watch those mirrors, listen to that spotter, or maybe follow Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the front. Well, we know his car was good out front. Clean air, no problem, but get back in the three wide here and he's in the middle. How's the car going to handle in this kind of situation? Martin Truex Jr. leading that outside lane. And there's Stenhouse right behind the 88 of Earnhardt, right smack in the middle of the field. And it doesn't matter how fast your car is, where are you going to go? You got nowhere to go right now. You just got to wait it out. Right behind Stenhouse, one of Earnhardt's teammates, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Matt. Mike, we've heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking about handling being a key today, and that's what's going on with his teammate Jimmy Johnson in the 48. The car was on the free side that run right now in the middle. They made a chassis adjustment. He took four tires on that stop. Yesterday morning, Jimmy Johnson got on his bicycle and did 60 miles. After qualifying, he got back on it and did 45 more last evening. Teammates battle at the front, Harvick and Boyer. You're going to wear that bicycle out. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's about physical fitness? No, not this weekend. It's about mental fitness. So maybe riding that bike a little bit extra gets his mindset in the right place. Well, I asked Jimmy about it. He says, I've got a race coming up Tuesday. This was my last warm-up for the race. Oh, that's a great shot right there. Those cars going over that camera. Holy cow. What do you do when you have two teammates up front and neither wants to give up the lead? <laughs> you race for it. That's what they're doing. I mean, they're both of those, you know, even as teammates, this is the best position you could be in. You're controlling it from the inside line or the outside line. It's that yellow forward of Joey Logano inside row, three cars back. Jamie? 
Well, you guys mentioned he's without his crew chief this weekend and next because of a penalty last week. Well, he has two gentlemen atop the pit box today helping him with strategy and calling. The guy in the red shirt inside, that's Miles Stanley. He's listed as the official crew chief, and although this is something he wants to do in the future, he is the race engineer, and that is his focus today. You see Greg Irwin on the left. He is the Xfinity Series crew chief, called the race for Joey yesterday. He's calling strategy, and on that last stop, he made a wedge adjustment to that 22 car. No tires, just helping that grip. That's a great call. I think Greg Irwin calls a great race. So to bring him in and be that strategist or at least assist with it, uh, you know, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guy to be on the box than that. I tell you what, you couldn't ask for better. These Fords and now the Toyotas are surfing here a little bit. Here comes Kyle Busch up on the outside here, but the Fords have really been hard to get around here in the early going. Well, we saw Mark Trex Jr. go three wide around Ryan Blaney, and who saw that coming? Kyle Busch. He moved up in front of him and. Watch, you might see Keselowski do the same thing and go to the middle to try to get around Boyer. Keselowski's kind of up. Keselowski's kind of been hung in that second spot. He's a good pusher. Had not been able to get out front yet. Protect the middle. Protect the middle. Back to the bottom. All clear. It's Clint Boyer's radio. And Three wide behind the two. Ooh, Harvick going to surge back in the four, but. Side drafting him is Kyle Busch in the 18 and he jumps ahead. Yeah, Kyle went right down to that the quarter panel on that rear bumper. That's the the the, the sweet spot if you want to side draft to get some momentum. They might take uh -oh. Brad Keselowski three wide. Sure and is. they do. They got a little touchy. It's amazing the surge. You see a car come flying up on the outside and you think he's gonna go the lead, and then he stalls out. And here comes another surge. Boyer, Bush, Harvick, Truex, Keselowski. Five cars under a blanket for the lead at Talladega. The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet, the most awarded car company three years in a row. And by Budweiser, pursuing the American dream since 1876. This Bud's for you.
30 laps complete, 25 to go in stage one. Kyle Busch has now led in all but two of his last 19 starts at Talladega. He is up front with Martin Truex Jr., a pair of Toyotas. Brad Keselowski's green Ford down on the bottom, well up to the middle in front of Ryan Blaney. And Clint Boyer leading the bottom group with Kevin Harvick. Michael Waltrip ran in the Daytona 500, the only other restrictor plate race so far this year. Michael, what about handling in these cars here? <laughs> it's a constant argument with your crew chief. He wants to free the car up and make it go faster. Maybe take some rounds out of the back and lower it a little bit within the rules. But the driver's got his hands full, Mike. I saw Chase Elliott get a little bit sideways in the pack, and that's what you deal with when the air comes off the other cars. If you're loose at all, you, if you're, you're, you'll get sideways and you could cause an issue. And I was a little bit concerned or surprised that more people didn't take tires. I think it'll be interesting to see what they do at end of stage one. Yeah, Michael, you just are a victim of circumstances, and the circumstances that you have really no control over that get you in trouble because someone else around you makes a mistake, and you I, can't avoid it. I was so surprised to hear that Brad Keselowski was having a handling issue. He was second in line when he was complaining about that car being loose. Normally, you hear from drivers that are mid-pack or in the middle, three wide, my car's not handling very well because there's no air getting to that rear spoiler, but not second. And the two fastest cars in qualifying have nowhere to go. They're stuck in the middle of the pack. Ricky Stenhouse, 60, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 12. Remember Kyle Larson, who hit the wall back on lap 17? They made repairs on Larson's car, and he's working his way back up through the field. There he is up on top, up to 18th. Yeah, I think he'll be fun to watch coming back to the front, and he'll get back up there. And you know what he did? When he hit the wall down here in turn one, where does he like to run? <laughs> He likes to run up next to the wall. That's why he didn't have a lot of significant damage to that car when that tire went down. DW, how, how about a year ago, the number three car, Austin Dillon, and all the damage that happened to that race car, and heck, he finished in the top five. That thing was a wad of tape. <laughs> yeah, after pitting 15 times for repairs. Yes, sir. Well, the middle line, something's all shaken up there. Ryan Blaney still leading that middle groove. No, now Keselowski up to the middle in front of Blaney and Kenseth and Earnhardt. I think Keselowski's looking for a little bit of operating room here. He doesn't have anybody under him right now, and here comes that 21 car Blaney. That could be a selfer right there. But look at the grill on Keselowski's car. Is he having the same problem that Stenhouse had earlier? Oh, he sure does. Uh, That's pretty big. I, 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 think he might it, I think it's above the yeah, I think he can live. I think he can live with that. I don't think that's too much of a problem right now. Vince. It yeah, that's exactly right. Right now, just keeping an eye on it on that two car. They know they've got the debris on the grill, keeping a close eye on the temperatures. Not an issue yet. We'll keep you updated. Last October here, Keselowski was leading when he lost an engine. And, and Mike, he does something that I don't see a lot of other drivers able, drivers able to do. He can get out front like he is right here and seems to be able to work one side to the other, backs forth, backs forth, makes it very difficult for people to get by him. But did you see right there? That's how wide this racetrack is. He went to the very bottom. Kyle Busch was all the way at the top. Just even without the help from behind, he was able to go up and clear Kyle Busch and jump up in front of him and take this lead. You're going to see Kozlowski ride that elevator up and down all day long. Now, when we talk about trash on the grill, here's Larry with our Ford Performance cutaway car. Yeah, Mike, here in Daytona, our restrictor plate tracks, it does not matter if you run a Ford, a Chevrolet, or a Toyota. NASCAR mandates the size of the opening and the location of the opening. Here in Daytona, it's right there in the bumper area. There's no grill opening up here. There's no grill opening down here. And the size has to be 23 and two quarter. You can tape it up as we see a lot of the drivers do and their teams do, but that opening it cannot be any bigger. It's the same location for every manufacturer, and it's mandated the same size with the exception of adding the tape. Yeah, Larry, it looks like that two car, the debris is just outside the grill opening, stuck to the right to the right front of the uh, nose there. And if it did close down that opening, he's certainly fine and maybe more encouraged to be out front. If he goes falls back and gets in the middle of this pack, it might become more of an issue. So Brad Keselowski leads from Kyle Busch. The first seven cars within half a second and the first 20 within one second of the leader.
The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, and by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. Hey, who's worrying less right now is Ricky Stenhouse. Our pole sitter got shuffled trying to get some uh, papers off of his grill, fell back to about 18th or 19th. There's Stenhouse right up there on the inside line in third in that line. And another piece of debris on Brad Keselowski's grill as they come through the trioval with Matt Kenseth, Ryan Blaney in the middle, and Stenhouse. I don't know if you want to be leading right now. If you just picking up all the debris if you're the leader. I still don't think it does. I see where those pieces are when they grill the two car. It doesn't look like it's a problem yet. Couldn't, don't need any more paper on there, though. Kyle Busch in the high line backs up and Stenhouse whoa, whoa. jumps to the top, as does Kenseth and Keselowski up to the top floor to block. Gosh, I, I don't know how close it was on the track, but that looked like you're going to run over each other. <laughs> Holy smoly. Vince? Brad Keselowski, we've noted that debris on the grill, still not a major issue as it just covers a little bit of the hole up there on that front grill. Keselowski says there's debris everywhere all over the track, though, so he anticipates that being a problem for others as well. As far as his handling is concerned, he says it's much better when I'm out front, so let's keep it here. <laughs> Always. Now, Kevin Harvick, within the last two laps, has dropped way to the back. What's up with the four, Matt? Similar trend, Mike, between teammates Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer. In fact, Boyer spotter noted that they needed to move to the middle, to the top, because that's where the most energy was. One other note, he felt like that the 14 and 2 worked much better together than the 4 and 14. And that's something a driver will do, and Jeff knows this. You kind of go through those sides. You, you run those things through your mind as you're running with other cars. Who do I run well around? Who pushes? Who, who am I better with? And uh, using that for later on. Yeah, you're watching a, a similar personality and driving style and decision making. And when you like what they're doing, what their plan is, you like to stick with that driver, with that car. I, I call it body language. And I, I mean that in, a, in, a, in, in the car's body because you can tell what an attitude the driver is just by the way he handles his race car in and around traffic. Does he go? Does he wait? What does he do? You really figure that out early in the race. Comes Danica Patrick with damage from uh, the bump at the start. We showed you how she got into the back of David Reagan pretty hard and during the pit stop they put a lot of tape on the front end of her number 10. Look at third place that is Kurt Busch who finally got his first restrictor plate win in this year's Daytona 500. He'd been the bridesmaid several times pushed Ryan Newman to a 500 victory and finally got one of his own. We know one thing, that's not the car he had at Daytona, because <laughs> it's in Daytona, USA. And I was shocked by that stat when we found that out, because he is so good on restrictor plate races uh, in these kinds of uh, circumstances. So I thought for sure he had won a restrictor plate race, maybe not a Daytona 500, but he's so good here. I'm not surprised at all he's up front, and I won't be surprised if he's a factor here today. And the car he's right behind, Ryan Blaney, was the car that finished second to Bush in the 500. Let's get down to Jamie and our nationwide Dale Jr. performance report. Well, Dale Jr. talked about handling that it would be an issue, but so far his car has handled well. He said, I'm all right. They haven't made a single adjustment all weekend. Now on that first stop, they took right side tires only. The only thing he's really saying on the radio, he's talking to his, his spotter, TJ Major, saying, come on, TJ, come on. I need you to be quicker on the call. He's been shuffled back a bit. He had a hole. He wanted to go there with the front pack and missed it. Well, it's a tough place to spot, Jamie, because at times the spotters are a mile or more away from these cars. Mike, you almost have to anticipate what's going to happen in and, in and around you Mick to Murray. be able to be a good spotter. Well, I don't know what happened in front of Mick Murray and, and also with the five car of Casey Kane, but Mick Murray really had to check up right there. 11 laps to go in stage one. Stay right here. You won't miss a thing at Talladega.
Seven laps to go in stage one at Talladega. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that blue 17 fell all the way to 18th getting trash off his grill. Now he wants the lead back from Brad Keselowski. And Mike, the end of these stages, I can't believe how the intensity picks up. These guys get really aggressive at the end of each one of these stages. The only issue that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has is he squeezed between two Penske teammates. They may be four teammates, but they're not Penske teammates. Wow, Ooh. that 22 took a little dive right there. Yeah, but watch the momentum that's going to come from that move. Now he's got Chase Elliott giving him a big push. He'll come with a big run. Nowhere to go. To the inside. Six to go. That's how the momentum gets generated. When you jump up in front of a car that has a big run, now he gets to your rear bumper, starts pushing you. Now you gain about four or five miles per hour. But Stenhouse dropped down to the inside to side draft off the 22 an inch ahead. Two by two, they're coming around to five to go in stage one. Yeah, this is he's loving this. As we watch the battle up front, Kozlowski leading. Kevin Harvick may have dropped to the back with a problem. Matt. My concern in the four pick, Kevin Harvick telling the team the car was vibrating like crazy. He's not sure if it's the rotors or a wheel mate, but certainly it's something harmonic. This thing is extremely hard to drive right now. It's uh, almost tight on exit. The all the way through the entry, but it's vibrating fast. Wow. Yeah, Hang on to her. Five more laps, brother. Five more laps. Now Logano up the inside. Oh, Mike, look Brian at this. Blaney. Look at these cars. All I mean, stinking down that back straightaway. Just inches apart. Four Fords out front. Then Austin Dillon's number three Chevrolet. Kyle Busch's number 18 Toyota. And the Ford of Boyer. Like yeah. the, the, the turbulence of these cars. It moves. You know, you can hold the wheel steady, but that car is going to move around. Jamie. So, well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just told his team, I'm pushing water, guys. I need to get that air. I need to get this debris off the grill. I believe there's still a little piece, but he's still pushing water, but he's trying to push to get to the front to win this stage. Brad Keselowski also has paper debris on his in, in opening there in the grill. Your tap just started flashing red. Your tap just started flashing red. Ten four, ten four. <laughs> what? what kind of advice is that? <laughs> uh, ten four, yeah, it's, it's flashing red. Deal Continue. with it. Right? Continue on. All right. We're, we're going to test every bit of these engines today. Well, the good thing is we're coming to the end of this first stage. You'll be able to do something about it. If uh, Here's the last opportunity to pit before the stage ends. Three to go. Denny Hamlin will be one driver who comes to pit road. The pits will close with two to go. Well, maybe he stops now. He won't have to stop when they have the caution after the stage, Larry. Yeah, he, what he did, because remember, the next time by, pit road closes, so he can make this stop and stay on the lead lap, then he'll stay out at the end of stage one. Jamie. Yeah, it's interesting. I talked to his crew chief this morning, and he said one of their deals, part of their strategy, was to play well with teammates. Well, they haven't done that so far. They dropped back early. They are just on their own game plan. As you saw, he just pitted for right side tires. Only the top 10 at lap 55 get stage points. If you can't get to the top 10, why not stop? Uh, a couple of takers on pit road right after the lights went red. We'll check on that in a bit. One of them was Daniel Suarez. The other is Matt Kenseth. When this is another situation where because of where the start finish line is, when those leaders got there, that's when they shut down pit road. They got on pit road just before that. That's a smart move. I'm kind of worried about Hamlin. If he fails the back to stay out of trouble, when this stage ends, where's he going to be? Up front. Up front. He goes, there. oh, man, did I mess up? Coming to one lap to go in stage one. Brad Keselowski, Ricky Stenhouse in Fords, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex in Toyota. Could we see a preview of the last lap of the race move as they come to the line to end stage one? 
I'll tell you what, these guys had pitted just now, the Toyotas, they're getting jeopardy of going to lap down. Oh, the 20's definitely going to lap down. The 19's going to lap down. But guys, they know all the leaders will pit at the end of stage one. So no harm, no foul, really. Take the wave around, I guess, and there, be back on the lead lap. And there will be a free pass. Yeah, but they're going for track position. That's what that call is meant to, to encourage or create. Denny Hamlin might end up. So here comes Keselowski down to the line. And Brad Keselowski will get the green and white checkers ahead of Ricky Stenhouse as the stage one winner. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Trevor Bain, the top five. Joey Logano, Paul Menard, Danica Patrick, Ryan Blaney, and Eric Jones will get the stage points for stage one. Something wrong with that 20 car. I don't yeah, know he's sure got what. Way more issues than going to lap down. Days off Ford they started in front Stenhouse and finished stage one in front Brad Keselowski for Team Penske. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of NASCAR, is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. Stage one is complete. Brad Keselowski picks up his second mid-race stage win of the year. His first was at Richmond last week. He won stage two. And the two Joe Gibbs drivers that headed for pit road trying to make it there before pit road closed with two to go and were unsuccessful in doing so. There is Brad Keselowski at the line taking two to go. And as the field, that's the signal. 
to close pit road and both Daniel Suarez and Matt Kenseth had not yet passed the line that signifies the beginning of pit road speed then Kenseth had a flat went a lap down and will start tail end of the longest line Daniel Suarez stayed on the lead lap he will also restart back there with Matt Jeffrey Earnhardt will get the free pass as we've completed stage one in the first 55 laps. Mike, I think those guys were committed and they just couldn't, they couldn't, they were, they were, they had to come on pit road. So now the pits will open for lead lap cars. 35 of them. Here's some uh, audio from Ricky Stenhouse team. Love all the people here, but man, the trash that we got on the track is crazy. Yeah, she's got some on its grill right now. Here's us now clean. Yeah, it's important. Stenhouse got a good look at the crowd, not just up in the grandstand, but he had a big time out in the in Talladega infield on the boulevard on Friday night. Got out there with the people. He, of, he was of... not by himself. I do no, not... Daryl, how was it out there? No, I didn't go, <laughs> uh, but I know a guy that did. You know, the, the track does a really cool thing where they, they uh, get a bunch of drivers and people from the sport out there and interacting with the fans. And, man, they have a great time. It, it is a real highlight, I think, for the fans and the drivers and competitors uh, to interact with those fans here at Talladega. That boulevard is something else. <laughs> Pit crews at the ready. Pit road will open this time. Brad Keselowski leads them in, Matt. Mike Martin Trish Jr. told his spotter Clayton Hughes to pass on to the 18 team. Their cars work so well together in the draft, he'll be there all day. His car is on the free side. Look for tire carrier Adam Marshall. You can see he's got the wrench on the deck lid. He'll make an adjustment on the 78. Brad Keselowski says the handling fell off those last few laps in that run. Loose in, tied off. It's going to be a four-tire change for Brad. The uh, 18 of Kyle Busch, four tires. Jamie? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the number one pit box. It's a four-tire stop this time. He did not take tires the first time around. A little wedge adjustment. Car is good. It's fast. The best thing you just saw, wipe the grill. It's clean. Martin Truex will win the uh, race off pit road because Brad Keselowski had to uh, jump out of the throttle for Daniel Suarez cutting in front of him to get to his pit box. Let's show you that as uh, Truex picked up three spots. Now here's Brad because he was the first car in. He's done with service, has to stutter and wait as Suarez enters the box in front of him. Hey Brad, this is Jeff up in the booth. Uh, great job, congratulations on that stage win. Uh, Man, I don't know, do you want to be leading? Because there's a lot of debris floating around out there. Oh, hey, Jeff, what's up, man? Sorry, I was talking at the same time, but heck yeah, I always want to be leading, Jeff. It just, uh, you know, the debris, it's the same for everybody. And you just, man, it's like, uh, you like to drive out the mirror so you can keep track of what the pack's doing, Jeff, but uh, you can't really because the debris is so heavy, you're dodging minefield. So it's uh, certainly a balancing act, but uh, I want to be up front either way. I'm surprised we're hearing conversations about handling. Are you surprised by that? Did that catch you off guard today? Well, you know, Talladega, when it gets hot, uh, especially when it's been cold earlier in the week, I think, Jeff, everybody trims out for speed and gets caught a little off guard. And I would say that's probably got all of us a little bit here today with the hot steps. The cars are really sliding around, uh, even in the lead. So, yeah, I would say it's uh, definitely going to be a factor for the rest of the afternoon. All right. Well, you got a fast race car. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Brad Kozlowski, winner of stage one. It's a long held adage in racing. The leader cleans the racetrack for everyone.
The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Hep C Hope and by AARP, Real Possibilities. Under caution, Ty Dillon did not make a pit stop at all. He's your race leader, followed by Denny Hamlin, who stopped with three to go in stage one, and then Martin Truex, who won the race off pit road at stage end. So with Dillon leading, let's check in with Michael Waltrip at the eBay Motors pit box. Yeah, Chris, I slipped out here just to get a taste of Talladega to see the speed of the cars and hear the sounds and the noises. And I got to looking around and I thought, this is what it's like to be a crew chief, especially at Daytona and Talladega. All alone on an island sometimes, it seems. Denny Hamlin's crew chief, Mike Wheeler, making a great call to get him in and off a of pit road to gain track position. Other guys knowing that you have to stay with the pack. You get separated from the pack, you don't have any success. Also, think about the crew chief's job here. He can't really make that big of an adjustment to pick up any handling here because the car's handling pretty well anyway minor adjustments but we got to have speed so the driver saying I'm loose and the crew chief saying I need to lower the back so you can go faster it's a constant argument a constant balance constantly feeling like at times you're all alone on an island <laughs> like Michael is right now <laughs> We're coming to one to go. Now, Kevin Harvick made an extra pit stop, still has a vibration. Kyle Larson's been back in for more body repairs, as has Matt Kenseth, who is now one lap down. Larry, I'm curious about this Ty Dillon strategy, not pitting at all. Well, I think we may see guys come here right now and top off because we're going to be right there when we go back racing, Mike, of being able to make it to the end of stage two because of the laps we've run right here. Brilliant, Larry. Simply brilliant. Ty Dillon comes to pit road and does just that. So does Trevor Bain. Now let's get an update on uh, Kevin Harvick's issues, Matt. Mike, that vibration still persists. Harvick hit pit road. Cheddar Bob Smith, the car chief, and a couple other crew members went around, looked underneath the car on the right side under the nose. They made an adjustment on that stop to help a little more clearance with the splitter. The vibration, though, is still there. They said Harvick is just going to have to live with it. Austin Dillon coming out. Michael McDowell just ahead of him, who's also had a strong race. Ten drivers in all hit pit road at the end of this caution period, separating stages one and two. And you know, going back to Kevin Harvick in that conversation, I have seen where a splitter maybe is cracked or broke slightly, and what does it do? Creates that vibration. Great aerial coverage of the pack here at Talladega from Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Now, Brad Keselowski is poised to restart seventh after leading most of stage one, Vince. Yeah, he came in in the lead, and as he was coming down pit road, his team warned him that there would be traffic coming into their pit at the time he was exiting his. And that's exactly the way it played out. That's why he lost six spots on pit road. As you guys noted, he had to stop leaving his box because Daniel Suarez was coming in just ahead of him. Yeah, but it's a smart heads up move because if he had exited, he would have had damage. So it's really smart of them to be patient and lose a few spots right there, but keep all the fenders on it. Yeah, back to that vibration real quick on Harvick. Sometime I've had inner panels. Some of the inner panels will shake loose in the car. I've even had the tailpipes and the headers maybe get a little hole in those things, and it creates a heck of a sound that feels like a vibration. There's Cole Witt riding 35th. Still a little confused why the JGR car split up on that pit strategy and, and we saw them take risks with the 20 and the 19 that didn't pay off, but it did for the 11. Look who's leading this race right now. <laughs> I, I don't know if he wants he to be or not. Earlier. But... <laughs> 35 cars on the lead lap in a race that has seen as many as 88 official lead changes. That's happened twice in recent years here. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. We're in stage two. We're back under green. Hamlin with a headwind, and here are the Penske Ford teammates, Logano and Keslowski, literally tail to nose. That's such perfection. Those two's working well together. Brad back there pushing on the back of Joey and getting them right to the front.
that kind of bump drafting is perfectly legal in NASCAR's top series. I'm going to be interested to see how Hamlin fares here. You know, he fell to the back. Maybe that was his strategy. I Four wide right here with Blaney and Boyer and Stenhouse. Woo. Blaney took advantage when Stenhouse went way high in the trioval. Still four wide. Yeah, a bit of a wad right in there. Boyer wanted to get from that. Ah, uh, easy, easy, boys. Top four, survive is still here. Top four. So Boyer was in that bottom lane. He wanted to get to that outside lane behind Truex. It's paid off for him, but it really hurt Stenhouse and Blaney. Ricky Stenhouse falls from second to out of the top 15. Car went way high on the racetrack in the trioval and back he goes now 18th. Yeah, he fell back like this early, you know, when he had that trash on the grill, lost a lot of track position, but got it all back at the end of the stage. See how he does again this uh, in this stage. I guess Hamlin had two choices, ride out back or run up front. Well, he's, he's going to feel both sides of, of the way you have to approach this race because before he's trying to be conservative, as we see wow. Kyle Busch not being conservative, going to the outside to block that move from Joey Logano. But now Denny's up front is completely different. Now he's got to be up front, be aggressively trying to maintain that lead and keep it. Yeah, I, that was what I was interested in, the Hamlin's car. Maybe he didn't feel like it was fast enough to get up there on his own, use that pit strategy and, the, and what he did there to get out front and then get some of that clean air and maybe stay there. I think they knew that was a plan, that that was what was going to get them that, uh, that track position and get this lead. Chase Elliott carrying one of Talladega's most famous names. His dad, Bill, holds the track record here. Many times voted NASCAR's most popular driver, 16 times, in fact. Chris Neville. Yeah, Mike, really, Chase Elliott just doing a lot of experiment today. He's been running high, he's been running low, kind of saying, uh, we're just trying to figure out where his car has speed. The upper lane just wasn't well organized when he's up there. Feels like the car is a little bit stronger down low, but he's also another driver that has been saying the car just moving around quite a bit when he's in the pack. So they did make an adjustment on that last stop. A Toyota Ford and two Chevrolets on the inside line. A Toyota, a Ford, a Toyota on the outside. I think about Dale Jr. what he said back at Daytona. When you have an opening, when you have a chance, an opportunity, you've got to take it. Yeah, you've got like, to take it when it's there. It's like a breath mint. Somebody offers you one, you better take it. You know who's been listening to that advice? Chase Elliott. <laughs> Watch Kozlowski on this replay on the right of your screen. Kyle Busch comes up high and Kozlowski is going to elevate her down to the bottom. That's a power move. That's yeah. confidence in your the speed of your car, the handling of your car. You don't see a lot of crossover moves at Daytona Talladega, but that sure was a nice one. But that goes back to what you said about Dale Earnhardt Jr. When you have momentum, you try to keep it all the time. If he wanted, if he was going to lose momentum, he would have had to stay behind the 18, check up a little bit, and that was going to create momentum for the inside lane to go by him. And everyone in this field knows, everyone who's been in the last five races here where Penske's had such success, if Kozlowski has a chance to make that move, he's going to. Denny Hamlin, your leader, 67 laps complete, 43 to go in stage two at Dega.
The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by Novartis. 70 laps complete, and look at them thunder off turn number four, three wide. It's like a volcano right now, Mike. She's smoking. <laughs> the intensity is picking up. All right, we've got a pick two, so here's a look at our McDonald's McCafe refreshing picks at this point in the race. You got to admire Denny Hamlin's strategy. He rode out back and then he got out front and Brad Keselowski. Keselowski has done everything to try to challenge, but within the last lap and a half has been shuffled back. We'll keep an eye on those two and others with 39 to go in stage two. My palms start sweating over the last couple <laughs> laps because I can just I just feel something brewing. Oh, it I just know seems I do too. like the energy within this pack and, and, and just the intensity level is rising yeah. fast. Energy or could it be impatience? For some, it's impatience. <laughs> I think. Now deep in this pack in 17th is Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie. That's right. He's not saying a whole lot. Says the car's driving okay, but about 10 laps ago, he said, I just feel like I'm not doing all I need to do. So they're just keeping patience right now. And, you know, it's been one of those seasons for the 88 team. A lot of bad luck last week included at Richmond, wrecked by his own teammate and Jimmy Johnson. But that wasn't the end of it. After the race, crew chief Greg Ives got a phone call. His wife, Jessica, and all three kids were involved in a major auto accident. Good news is all of them are okay. Bad news is the car was destroyed. So Greg told me this morning, I hope everything is behind us. The bad luck is behind us. This is a great opportunity to turn it around. Junior battling for 17, three wide as they come through the trioval. He's up there in the high lane behind Clint Boyer. Mike, i tell you one thing, that four car has got a good vibration to it now. Because <laughs> he has found his way right up to the front. Car Seventh looks pretty place. strong. Seventh for Harvick. And when you hear Junior say, I just don't feel like I'm doing the right thing, there are split second decisions that happen almost every single lap. Maybe there's a hole that opens up that you can get down into, and then that lane goes. Or maybe you get there, and the, next, the lane you were in starts moving forward. Every one of those decisions has an impact on your finish. We used to describe Talladega as chess at 200 miles an hour. Clint Boyer this week said baloney. Chess is two old guys sitting looking at the board, bored to death, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. This is not chess. He You're missed, making those decisions you describe several times a second. Speed. No. This is speed chess. No, but but this is just like driving on the highway. I mean, you can have a fast car, but all the lanes in front of you are blocked. You have nowhere to go. So you just got to sit here and bide your time. Wait for an opening. Ryan Blaney has quietly worked his way up to third on the inside line right now. Sixth overall, Vince. Well, and any time you're at Talladega, really two people are driving the car, the driver and the spotter. Blaney just said, I need to know sooner which lane has momentum so I can be ready for it in advance. Got to anticipate sometimes more than react here at Talladega. Chris? Well, Vince, we talk about drivers being aggressive. Jamie McMurray known as one of the most aggressive guys out there. And he spoke to this crew chief about that earlier today. And he said, I want my driver to be aggressive. This isn't about thinking about moves. It's about just taking moves. The drivers who are successful here, they just take those spots. And uh, that earlier contact with his teammate, Kyle Larson, he said, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just checked up in front of me. There wasn't anything I can do. There's McMurray in the one with Blaney coming up alongside fourth and fifth place. Mike, you just have to have, you just have to realize that in this kind of racing situation, you have no friends, you have no teammates, you only have people that are trying to do what you're trying to do, get to the front. Four laps to go in stage two. It's been all Denny Hamlin so far with his teammate Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. Three Toyotas up front from McMurray's Chevrolet and Joey Logano's Ford.
The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Cialis. 79 laps complete. Toyota top performers running. They were one, two, three a moment ago. Denny Hamlin's led every lap in stage two of this race. Kyle Busch in second, and now Martin Truex Jr. back up to third. They're your Toyota top performers. It's funny how it goes, Mike. We had a bunch of Fords up front early. Now we got a bunch of Toyotas up here. They just kind of go back and forth. Front to rear, front to rear. Asked for three words to describe Talladega. Martin Truex said good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> just well be, spoken. I might, be a, might be a Clint Eastwood fan. <laughs> oh, gosh. Denny Hamlin is doing a great job holding off everybody behind him, even his teammate Kyle Busch. But there was a big shuffle a few laps ago where the 18 went further back and he had such a run, he got up beside Denny Hamlin. Now it's just a drag race. Well, let me tell you, that guy behind the 18 car right now, he'll give him a shot if he gets a chance, I can tell you that. Ryan Blaney now leading the inside line with Harvick, but well back off the lead on the right. Watch the 21, you'll see the move that he tried against uh, Casey Kane. Little side draft there, and suddenly he has no help. Yeah, what he was Whoa. wanting to do is just make a one car pass right there. He thought he had a big enough run, he could go to the bottom and clear the five of Casey Kane and jump back up in front of him, but that gap closed up in a hurry. Boy, these guys, I tell you, they are quick, though. I mean, they can move these cars around at 200 mile an hour and still maintain control. Takes a lot of skill, I know that, and a lot of nerve. Car in the wall, it's the 55 of Reed Sorensen. Caution is out for the third time today at lap 82. It's the right front, shredded. Hey. Kyle Busch, your race leader from Jamie McMurray, Denny Hamlin, and Martin Truex as Reed Sorensen gets into the wall.
Now just prior to the caution coming out Brad Keselowski had dropped down to the inside here he backed up to pick up uh, Ryan Blaney and okay. Kevin Harvick and then goes below the double yellow line like he's going to pit and then the caution comes out. Yeah I think his spotter told him that somebody yeah, was in so. the wall and they were going to try to get on pit road before that pit uh, road closed. Here's Keselowski's radio. I don't know what you're doing here. Tell me to get down. I'm getting down. Stay very low down the front. Going to be a lot of debris all the way down the front and around the corner. I know it didn't work out. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just as I was pitting too. So he was going yeah. to pit, so, uh, but the caution came out with debris in the trioval. Yeah. Pit road open, Matt. Mike, Kevin Harvick was going to go with the two. Meanwhile, they told Truex, do not slide him. They're going to top him off with fuel. Chris Neville. Jamie McMurray saying his car's just been a little bit loose all day. That last adjustment didn't help. Just two tires, Vince. And the 18 of Kyle Busch from the lead took no tires, Jamie. Denny Hamlin in the 11. They took rights last time. Left this time. Fuel and wipe the grill. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex coming out first. Clint Boyer, Joey Logano pick up of eight spots for Boyer. 26 to go in stage two. Levin took left side tires on that stop. The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by KFC's new spicy crispy zinger chicken sandwich. It's finger looking good. We've all been here enough to know that we can win today or we can get in trouble today. But all we can control is what we do. A lot of things to partners. They better not pump trap me. A little late, man. Come on, CJ. Trying to dodge all this garbage. The trash that we got on the track is crazy. 
so stupid. Why? Oh, what is he doing? That was pretty hairy. That's what they're chatting about. Just over 100 laps to go here in Talladega. Time for a KFC Zinger race break with Michael Walter, Chris Byers, our pole sitter, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. leading the first laps for him this year in the first 13 of the race, but a little bit of a problem with some debris on the grill. And when he went to get it off, he couldn't quite get back in line, and that jumbled up the running order, Chris, and you saw contact from Jamie McMurray in the one into the back of the 42 of Larson, Larson into the outside wall. And Brad Kozlowski winning stage one. He's won four times here at Talladega in that green paint scheme of the two Penske race team. Actually, Penske's won the last three races when you think about Talladega, but what about the pit stop strategy going forward, getting ready for the restart? That seems like the best way to gain track position. Uh, just like on the eBay Motors pit box, I said on an island, these guys are definitely going off the, the home range. They're trying things that are different. What Mike Wheeler did with Denny Hamlin, bringing pit road right before the stage ended, got them that track position. The other crew chiefs noticed that. They were trying to play that game with Brad Keselowski. Couldn't quite get down to the pit road in time. So look for differing strategies. Guys trying to mix it up to gain track position. Because remember, Chris, once Hamlin got that lead, he never relinquished it. You get out front, you got a fast car, you block and you hopefully hold the lead. We heard radio communication moments ago. Let's listen in more to Brad Keselowski of the two team. Oh, if you were trying to tell me I was supposed to hit, I don't know what you were trying to tell me there. What we were trying to do there was remind you of the number we talked about before the race. We didn't want you to pit there. We were going to tell you, but we wanted you to start working down. Well, when that position working down means we should be going back. Copy that. Kozlowski has led the most laps today, a two-time winner this year. That's your KFC Zinger race break. Let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Four drivers did not stop under this caution, and they are up front for the restart. Trevor Bain on the inside in the six. Ryan Newman, David Reagan, and Ty Dillon did not stop. Mike, there it's the four drivers that came the last caution and topped off when we got the one to go. With these cautions here, they absolutely can make it to the end of stage two, so that strategy might pay off for them. It'll be 23 laps to go in stage two. Do you like this strategy? Boy, we're really seeing the, the uh, track position strategy play out, and I can't wait to see how this is going to work out for them, and I think it is a good strategy. Ryan Newman and team can afford to gamble. They already have a win this year. They got it at Phoenix. Mike, look at that grandstand. Look at the crowd. That's the most people I've seen here in a long time. Great job, Grant and guys. Grant Lynch, the head of Talladega. Folks love to watch races here because you just never know what's going to happen next. They don't have cell seats. They just need standing room. How do they ever do? They sit down. Twenty three laps to go in stage two and the final stage of seventy eight laps to get us to the checkered flag. Reed Sorensen checked and released at the infield care center but out of the race but OK. Mike you talked about strategy. That's what these stages are allowing these teams to do. It allows some of these teams that maybe wouldn't be able, able to get up front. They're up front right now with a shot at winning a stage or getting some points in this stage. Well, there's a strategy happening midfield right now. Four wide. Whoa! Goodness gracious. Right with Eric Almarola. Up on the outside, just dropped a few spots there. And Richard Petty's number 43. He's 20th. The look bad at, news, you're 20th. The good news, you're only eight tenths of a second off the lead. Look at and this. And a three wide for the lead. Look at this, Mike. I, I, don't, I don't know how these guys manage these cars. Three and four wide, side by side, 200 miles an hour. Trevor Bain, a Daytona 500 winner for the Wood Brothers. Ryan Newman has won the Daytona 500. Can and you, Ty Dillon. Can you imagine being in the middle of this crowd right here? These three these guys in the middle. Are, look at the cars bouncing. I, I can't imagine it, and I'm glad I'm up here right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. Look how tight this is. Let's listen to some of the spotters as they navigate out of turn four. Top of three. Right now. Two 
Everybody's kind of half here. Top of three. Wall and smooth about half apart. Levis coming. Front. He's to him now. Pretty close. Two back high. Top of eight. 37, 34. Work in the middle here. Two back big run. Top one three. Outside. Just him. 37. Still one back very top. Two back 75 behind. Still middle. Hundred ninety miles an hour closer together than most people park. Clint Boyer wants the lead. Gets to the outside of Ryan Newman. Boy, my guy, those spotters. I mean, that is so critical in keeping you out of trouble here, where everybody is, what they're doing behind you. you look at Hamlin. He's right here with Dale Jr. pushing on his rear bumper, trying to push him back to the lead. DW, you know the, one of the problems with the, the, what the spotter does here? There's so much information they're giving you that it's hard for you to decipher which one is the most important to take in. I, I totally agree. Ooh, 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 boys. Full face helmets, big containment headrests. Very little peripheral vision. Huge blind spots in these cars. If the they, spotter is the driver's lifeline. If they could see what we see. <laughs> <laughs> they might they not would, do this. They wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> That's what Kevin Harvick said yesterday. He was in the booth for the Xfinity race. He said, this looks wild from up here. Yes, it does. No matter man there, Clint Boyer done a shot out there into the lead. Middle all clear. Only two wide behind you now. Bottom with the advantage, the top's coming though. The it's top is Hamlin better, in the 11. Yeah, you better close back. that door in a hurry. Half back. Still half back. Get back to the bottom for a second. Now get back to the top quick. Half back. Oh, he didn't quite make it to the top. There's your push. Tried. Outside, outside. You got help coming. This is why part of a spotter's job is not just telling them where that car behind them is coming, but how they're stacked up behind them five uh, back, because that's where the energy gets created to create that momentum shift. That was Brett Griffin, Clint Boyer's spotter, as he tries to hold off Denny Hamlin on the outside. Yeah, I like that energy thing, and I like the push. Your line has to push. Top is tight, it's coming to you. Three rows of two by two. Now that's Chris Lambert, Hamlin's spotter. Two, the sixth car got loose a couple times behind him. We see Boyer being Dude, really aggressive there, going up and side drafting in the middle of the corner on the 11. Boy, they are leaning on each other right now. I, I tell you, there's, a, there's everything but touching. Jamie. Well, the six of Trevor Bainey is the second car on the outside. I talked to Matt Puchia's crew chief this morning. He said, we're pretty good at these style of tracks, but the problem is we haven't had many friends in the last few years because we haven't proven we have a lot of speed. Well, suddenly both the six and the 17, a lot of speed this weekend, and suddenly the Ford team's coming to them this morning. There was a big meeting. We want to work together. We want to work with you guys and be friends, and that's why you've seen the 17 and now the six running in front. Friends. Uh, I don't know about friends. Maybe. How about, how about we just be competitors? They might be friends at lap 93. <laughs> little, <laughs> can be friends at 10 to go. A little competition here. Now, right in the middle, that car with the black hood and the red numeral four on top, that is Kevin Harvick in the middle lane, about four cars back, Matt. Mike, 38 weekends, spending it on the roof at a racetrack. The spotters all have certain areas where they stand each weekend, but when they come to Talladega, you'll see them move around. Timmy Fidua, Harvick spotter, told me he will move around to the cars that are around Harvick. That way, they can do a lot of hand gestures to try to save time. Hey, what? He's a driver. He's got a top three finish here in the Xfinity Series. They're going to wear out a pair of shoes like day that, but they're not with the same guy very long. I think it's a huge advantage to have a spotter who has racing experience. They've been out there in these conditions. They know what to expect. They know what they need out of a spotter and the information. So Tim Fito will one of the best, but a lot of these spotters have racing experience. And look where Earnhardt's gone. Up into that top three, single file, in front of all the three wide behind them. Mike, the guys that get multitask, you just think about it. You got guys to your left, guys to your right, guy push, guy in front of you, spotter talking to you. There's so much going on every lap around this racetrack. You've got to be able to multitask and handle that. Whatever Junior wasn't doing right, a few laps back, he's doing it all right now. He's come to the front. We saw right there the 27 of Paul Menard left the door open. He was trying to push Dale Earnhardt Jr. And that opened up an opportunity for Joey Logano. Logano in the yellow Ford, the 22. Jimmy Johnson right alongside in the 48. 
Boy, that cost Paul Menard about 10, 12 positions. He's all the way at the back of this group now. Yeah, you know, the, remember I told you about the volcano and the smoking? That baby's starting to spark. Yeah. <laughs> that baby's starting to spark a little bit. Hey, guys, we talk about handling a little bit. I look at Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car up inside the top 10, that last trip to pit road. Chad Canals put four fresh Goodyear tires. He restarted deep in the field. And here comes Junior. Behind Hamlin, Dale Jr. comes to second place. But he just said, get ready, get ready. She's getting ready to erupt. Oh, yeah, here it comes. He's got a big run coming right here. Not, not going to be able to quite make it because the four cars down inside. You go back to Jimmy Johnson, the 48. Remember the issues they had at Daytona? He spun out pretty much by himself. They didn't qualify good, qualified deep in the field today, but I do think they've improved the handling on that 48 car. Matt? Mike, they ran five laps in practice, typically like they normally do at plate races, by themselves. Early in the race, the car was on the free side. The first two runs, they made some adjustments. The last stop, no changes on the 48. This is the best it's been all day, and it shows. Well, Johnson restarted back in 19th position. Earnhardt restarted 18th. They both come to the top five. 13 laps to go in stage two. Keep it right here and you won't miss a moment from Talladega. The Vice Titans at Talladega as there's 10 laps to go in stage two. Denny Hamlin's Toyota, Kevin Harvick's Ford, and Jimmy Johnson's Chevrolet out front. A lot of jockeying in the pack there as Casey Kane and teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. move to the high side. Yeah, bobbing and weaving right now. Long we don't bob and wreck, we'll be okay, but that bobbing and weaving is driving me crazy. Watch on the right, the 14 of Boyer and the 88 of Earnhardt. There was contact oh, there. Big time. Big time. That, that backed everybody up. That's a domino up. effect oh, from yeah. behind them. Boy, look at the great move Larson made. Going to 
He shot the gap to the inside. So what happened, the five car, the 77 came up, the five went a little higher, the 88 was behind him. That opened up the door for the 14 to try to go inside, but he, he sort of second guessed it and, and, and delayed on that move. And that's when Junior came back down and they made contact. And that sir. 77 is Eric Jones. First time we've called his name today a number. He is up into the top five. Great race for the rookie, Matt. Great work by his spotter, the High Plains Drifter, Rick Corelli, the veteran. And Eric Jones, they've worked that 77 from the back to the front. What happened on that pit stop congestion on pit road? He was blocked in. Their strategy was fuel only. They lost so many positions. They went back out, came back and got four tires. Great work, though, working to the front. I'll tell you, I'm liking four tires. That 48 got four tires. The 77 got four tires. Tires may not help any, but I sure do like them. Well, at the end of stage one, Denny Hamlin stopped with three laps to go in the stage. He's led all of stage two. And Larry, I know those other crew chiefs were paying attention to that. Yeah, Mike, this is a little different scenario. I mean, I will never rule anything out because if you pit now, you're not even thinking about the stage. You're thinking about trying to win the race, which is important, but you'd still have to stop another time. So I don't see anything gained by pitting before the end of the stage. Okay. Seven to go in stage two. <laughs> right now with everything I see here, they just want to make sure they have a race car at the end of yeah, this race. Just get to the end of this stage. Ty Dillon to the inside of Dale Jr. That's Joey Logano just ahead. And next week we're under the lights on FS1 at the Kansas Speedway out in the Great Plains, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That'll be the 11th race of the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup season. We'll click our heels and bring it right on home to you. <laughs> Is your dog's name Toto? Yeah. All right. Does your dog bite? It's not my dog. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we'll be appearing here all week. <laughs> okay, guys, I continue to rethink this strategy just a little bit. If you are somebody like Matt Kenseth, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., maybe even Austin Dillon, Ryan Newman, you know you're probably not in a position to win this stage or even get stage points. Maybe you do come before they close pit road with two laps to go before the end of the stage. Get the track position. Regardless, everyone would have to still make one more stop before the end of the race. So we'll keep our open here next three or four laps. Larry, the only oh. thing I worry about that is trying to get on pit road when they're all bunched up like this. Uh, you, you, you love to get run over trying to make some strategy like that work. Well, we'll find out shortly as we come to five to go in stage two. Yeah, the thing that worries me, DW, on that strategy is it's so easy to make mistakes, not only causing a big crash with the group behind you or outside of you trying to get to pit road, it's so easy to lock the tires up getting on pit road. It's so easy to slide through your box. You could easily to, lose the race right here. I hate to keep piling on to this strategy, but if you're not close to that lead pack, if you're not close to the leader, if you're in the back of that pack, you'll lose a lap also. Remember, Denny Hamlin barely cleared it, and he was near the front. So there's a lot of things to consider when you go off uh, off on this strategy. Agree, Michael. Kyle Busch has done everything but got to the lead. He's led nine laps twice, in, two times for nine laps in this race. But currently holding station in sixth place. Did he say they've got mojo? Yes, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, he's got some mojo. Look who's going on the inside, Ryan Blaney. Now, uh, Kyle Larson bounced off the wall earlier after a nudge from his teammate. What's up now with the 42? Wow. Now? Ooh, the 21 oh my Blaney gosh. is getting aggressive. Did you wow. see that? Matt? Awesome move by the 21, the 42 of Kyle Larson. Charging issue on that 42. They may utilize the stage two caution to change out batteries. Mike, that, that move that uh, Blaney made in that 21 call, you better believe that spotter is telling him that it's clear because otherwise it would have been a heck of a wreck. We saw him make some big, bold, aggressive moves to Daytona that was paying off for him. Now, one pit stop. Matt Kenseth is in. Uh, earlier, he went a lap down because he had a valve stem knocked off one of his rear tires. He got back on the lead lap at the end of stage one, and here he is with three to go in stage two making a stop. 
Stage points on the line and a playoff point for the stage winner. Denny Hamlin wants to lead all the way here. Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson may have something to say about it. Or Truex, Blaney coming up the outside. Don't forget Eric Jones, he's sitting in there too. Pit Road will close this time with two to go in the stage. Here are the drivers who have won stages and picked up those playoff points, which carry all the way through to get you to Homestead. Martin Truex Jr., there he is on the outside. With five stage wins, Kevin Harvick with three. Jamie? And Denny Hamlin has not won a stage yet this year. And I talked to Wheels, his crew chief. He said, although that's important, we've just mixed up our strategy to focus on the big picture of winning the race. Well, their strategy early on got them this track position. As he continues to lead the 11 car, he says the car is good. No complaints from Denny today. He's got one lap to go to notch his first stage win of the season. Points go to the top 10, which was McMurray, now Casey Kane in 10th place. There's the battle for the last point available in stage two. That'll change about nine times for to get back around here. <laughs> sure. I'm telling you. And we didn't think that stage points were going to be important to Daytona, but boy, did they battle for those points. So everything is important. Now Matt Kenseth trying to stay on the lead lap after leaving Pitt Road. But even if he's passed, he'll likely be the first car one lap down to get the free pass. Here they come to complete stage two. Hamlin, Harvick with a look at Boy, the lead. Yeah, I really thought Harvick had the momentum to get that pass made. Truex in third, Jimmy Johnson on the inside coming. Up the middle, Blaney in the 21 gets third. There was contact between Blaney and Truex, who ends up fourth in stage two, Jimmy Johnson. Push back to fifth, Kyle Larson sixth. Eric Jones, Casey Kane, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray. What's oh, his? The, four, the, the 48, 40, yeah. He sucked the 48 around, made contact the 78. <laughs> wow. Man, what a move. Wow. Woo. Caution is out. And Denny Hamlin wins a caution free. Stage number two at Talladega.
what, this place is packed today. I know it. I saw that. It looks great. South Vegas. Look at that Grinch. Look at the crowd. The four is asking if you're able to push. Can't get to them. I'm trying. Uh, pretty loose here. Four. All right, guys, we got a tire down. Yellow. Yellow for that 42. He scraped the wall down here. At the end of stage two, now that's a live shot of repairs to Kyle Larson's car. They have the right side window out. Mike, that thing is just about getting in winning form. Getting <laughs> 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 her about tuned up. Yes. So, Clayne Crawford, star of the Fox hit Lethal Weapon. He was involved in the pre race ceremonies today. He's hanging out in uh, Chase Elliott's pit. Or he's hanging out with the Hooters crew. You decide. <laughs> uh, he's hanging out, seeing a great race at Talladega, is yep. what he's seeing. I don't know about that, but this guy right here had a great view of that uh, stage. I can tell you that. Denny Hamlin led 40 of 55 laps in stage two. After strategy running in the back and strategy pitting before the end of stage one, put him out front for the lead. Tuesday on FS1, the Yankees, who just decimated the Cubs this weekend. Take a swing at Joey Votto and the Cincinnati Reds. That's Tuesday at 7 Eastern on FS1. Seventy six laps to go. Hamlin. Stage two winner from Harvick and Blaney. Here's what you see on Fox Sports Go if you want to follow the race there. Car channel coverage for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ty Dillon. You'll see the race coverage in car cameras, hear the team communication, and view real time driver stats. Go to foxsportsgo.com or download the Fox Sports Go app on your favorite device. Kyle Larson is stalled on pit road. They're going to push him back to his stall. Pit road will be open this time. Here they come, Matt. Mike, nice rebound by Kevin Harvick in the four. Scored some stage points here. Hitting pit road in the second position. Now keep an eye on Matt Holzbauer, the carrier. Eric Maycroft in the front, hitting those lugs. Going to go for four tires on the four. Meanwhile, the 78 of Truex, and I just don't know how I saved that one. Just short of the start finish. A little bit of damage on the 78. Four tires for him as well, Vince. Well, Ryan Blaney in that 21. Bottom left of your screen, finished second at Daytona. Pits from third place today, but they're real concerned about that damage on the right front after the contact with Truex, Jamie. The 11 and Denny Hamlin said the car's driving great. Right side's only. He told his team, guys, I want to keep track position the rest of the way. Don't expect him to drop back again. Hamlin wins the race off pit road, but Eric Jones and Brad Keselowski with two tire changes move way up. Trying to repair the right front fender damage on Ryan Blaney's car. Let's talk to Denny Hamlin. What do you say? Hey, Denny Hamlin, it's DW. You got me, buddy. Man, the race started. And we said, what's Denny doing? And now the end of this stage, uh, you want that thing. You want to keep track position. Car looks pretty fast. What do you think, pal? Yeah, just trying to manage risk. Uh, you know, statistics show you, you don't want to be anywhere from 7th to 18th. That's typically where the race, uh, the wreck starts. So I was in the middle of that spot. I didn't want to be there. So I backed out and uh, tried to play the strategy to try to get the track position for stage two, and it uh, worked out for us. All right, well, you're doing a great job, buddy. Car looks good out front. Keep it up. Hamlin led 40 of the 55 laps in stage two. Stage three to bring it home, coming right up here on Fox.
Race fans, when Chase wins, you win. Visit Hooters24.com now. Two laps away. Unless we have overtime, that's the trophy the winner here at Talladega and the Geico 500 will get. Made of iron, the Roman god of fire and forge in honor of that. All right, so the ultimate winner we're waiting on, the stage one winner, Brad Kozlowski. Stage two winner moments ago, Denny Hamlin. And Hamlin, Michael, he's going, it's funny, he said on the radio earlier when they asked him about getting to the front, he said, I'm not going to be able to get there. I'm just going to try to avoid the wreck that is going to happen. Well, he's led the most laps, and he's coming off back-to-back -back top 10 finishes, searching for his first win of the year. And I agree with everything Denny said. The wreck is going to happen. <laughs> These cars are juking and jiving three and four wide. It's really treacherous back in the pack. And I love how these drivers have figured out a way to get to the front and take control of the race, dictate how the pace is run, what lane is blocking, what lane means you're gonna pass in. The guys up front are in control. Third straight race that he's led, and Brad Keselowski, who's currently third, said the moves to me are like a game of chess, and I enjoy that game. He's enjoying this race, and so are Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. Clint Boyer had an uncontrolled tire in his pit. He'll restart tail end of the longest line. We'll show you a look at that. For number 14. And there it goes. Just she out of goes. reach. You're only allowed so many men over the pit wall, they couldn't jump over and get that. They're approaching the Geico restart zone, and after that run to the end of stage two, Martin Truex said on the ra on the in-car radio, if Ryan Blaney tries that again, he's going around. I had to clean that up a little. <laughs> a lot. A green flag. Say, that is exactly what he said, but that's close. That's a pretty wild and aggressive move to end that stage. Pretty aggressive move by Matt Kenseth coming down pit road. Didn't work so well for him after coming to the end of stage one, but worked out perfectly here at the end of stage two. Toyota teammates up front. I just got to tell you, Matt Kenseth is normally a stage three driver. That's what he <laughs> normally is. Well, he's in position for that now. Danica Patrick taking three wide to the outside of Chase Elliott with a little help from behind as well. Well, you just get those big old runs and you just hope you got somewhere to go when you get there. Patrick got some help way up on the top side of the racetrack. Trevor Bain and Austin Dillon right behind. Now, Mike, it looks like that 10 car's got a lot of trash on her grill, but that's where they had to tape that thing up from contact earlier. Self-inflicted. Yes. Yeah, right yeah. at the start of the race when we got the green. Tell you that outside line up there where Danica is is going somewhere. Here's Matt. Ten car looks like it's had a great day at Martinsville more than Talladega. The car was loose for Danica Patrick earlier in the race. They made a couple different adjustments on those stops. She says that it really feels like it's in the racetrack like she wants now, just trying to settle in, pick the right line at the right time. Well, they got it just uh, for that severe underbite she got when uh, <laughs> she rammed into David Reagan on the start. Matt Kenseth out front trying to give Joe Gibbs his first checkered flag of the season. Now Denny Hamlin in front of his teammate. They're side by side. By this time last year, Joe Gibbs Toyotas had won five of the nine races. I think they Big got that push from Brad Keselowski to the 11 at Hamlin. Yeah, they got that green car. He's going to have a whole lot to say about who wins this stage. <laughs> He knows what it's like to be out front taking control of this race. He doesn't want anybody else, especially Denny Hamlin, to be out there. And there he goes. I think he's the guy that when it comes time to go to the pay window, he'll be the first one there. Wow, that was a great move. He was actually able to clear Denny Hamlin, get up in front of him. When you talk about really good restrictor plate drivers, that's what they know to do. They know how to get that push from behind, make the move at the right time, side draft in the right place, enter in the corner, and complete the pass all by yourself. Well, sort of all by yourself. 
important sponsor for Brad Fitzgerald glider kits. He's not gliding along. And those aren't little balsa wood airplanes. They make a, a kit that goes on tractor trailers to improve both aero and engine efficiency. Yeah. First time they've been on the Penske Ford. If you've been driving down the highway in recent years, you've realized that these trucks hauling things up and down the highways start starting to look more like spaceships. <laughs> You know, now we have robotic cameras right on the wall to give you these great shots. But back when CBS had the Daytona and Talladega races in the 80s and 90s, we had Joe Sakota. Look how close he is to the turn four wall with a camera uh, right near the cars, just wearing a helmet and, and a bubble mask. Joe passed away a week and a half ago. Boy, he was a pioneer in putting racing on television, and we salute his memory as we crank it up. Kevin Harvick to the lead with Denny Hamlin alongside. And boy, Kozlowski almost got Ooh. into Jimmy Johnson trying to get to the bottom. And here is how those robotic cameras are run today from a video game type uh, console in the safety of the Fox production compound. Those cameras sit right on top of the wall. Our cameramen fortunately don't have to anymore, but thanks to Joe Sakota and oh, those oh, like oh, oh. him. Well, a bump from Sorry, Joe Mike. Logano to the rear bumper, Jimmy Johnson. Woo. He almost went know. around. I don't know how he held him. That, look, this thing's getting ready to explode. I just got to tell you, I mean, I can feel it. Look at these guys. And Danica, Danica's right up in the, she's running ninth right now. She's been, but watch this. This is just a bump. Seems rather. And that was nothing. It just seemed like nothing, but it almost turned him around. See what, somebody running back of me 190 miles an hour. Woohoo! <laughs> Especially if you're not pointed exactly I, straight when it happens. I don't know if I'd call that nothing or not, but goodness. Well, I just, it just didn't look like it was much no, of an I, impact, I, 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 but I think it's about where you touch the rear bumper. It's not about how hard you push on that rear bumper. Very sensitive, these cars. Ooh, Keslowski just drove into a hole that was not there in front of Jimmy Johnson. Right now, what we're seeing, Mike, is these guys are positioning themselves for the end of this race. Get up front, stay up front, whatever it takes. Sixty-three laps to go. Two Fords, Toyota, Chevy, Toyota, Chevy, and three more Fords out front.
But Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hunt. 60 laps to go. It's the first time a Hendrick Chevrolet has led today. It's Jimmy Johnson forging his way to the front ahead of Kevin Harvick, Trevor Bain, and Matt Kenseth, and rookie Eric Jones. And Jimmy Johnson wiggled his way to the front because everybody <laughs> that hit him got him sideways. I think he said, I got to get out of here. I got to get up front. Mike, the only time a driver really, you can't, you can never rest. There's never an opportunity to say, I'm in the clear. Or, Nobody's on my rear bumper. Somebody is on your bumper all the time. The second you rest, DW, as you know, that's when you go backwards. Got it. That's when got something it. happens. You got to stay on top of everything going on around you at all times. And look who's in ninth place, fifth back on the inside, Eric Almarola. We gave you the odds on the favorites at the top of the day and said he was a long shot at what, 40, 50 to 1? Well, there he is in the top 10. A good 30 cars still have a shot at this one with 59 laps yeah, to go. He won the Xfinity race yesterday. Got some confidence and a good race car today. So let's take a listen live at how these spotters help their drivers worry less with our Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Lined up inside, checking up a little bit here. To the 20 side, you're good. You're good. Checking up. 88 outside. One inside the 13, still rolling 19, good here now. 21 for uh, good. 17. Out back. Nothing through the third lane at all. 18 if you want. Outside 18. Still inside. All even. Two by two. Five or two. We've got the 21 oh, stepping on the line now. That's four behind you. Third lane, five, third lane. Stuck up here, stuck up here. Still drag it up. He's got a pretty wide behind that 11. You're better now. 40. So just two wide. We see that two now. 88. Three top third lane. 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 Third it's like it's like a 40 ball pinball machine. Woo, that give me a headache. <laughs> That's how the spotters help these drivers worry less with our Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Mike, we got 35 cars, 35 cars, and here they all come, all on the lead lap. And the guy running 35th could still win this race. Kevin Harvick back to the front. Bottom lane up to the middle to hold back Jimmy Johnson. Back to the bottom, short way around. And how about Brad Kozlowski, who led quite a bit earlier, but now Vince looks like he's stuck in the middle. He is indeed. He feels like he's got the car, but just doesn't have the teamwork to or the room to maneuver his way back to the front. You know, I was talking to him earlier today before the race about how he becomes such a good restrictor plate racer. He's won five times on the plate tracks, including four here at Talladega. He said it's like tying your shoes. When you first learn, you overthink every single step, but after a while, it just becomes natural and you don't think about it at all. It only becomes complicated when you have to explain how you're doing it. Well, I don't know about you, but it looks a lot harder than tying my shoes, Jamie. Definitely. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is behind Brad Keselowski on the outside. We're on board with him now. Dale Jr., though, he's having an issue. His car just doesn't feel right. He said it's all over the place. It feels like the front and back just aren't hooked up together, and he said it gets worse on two tires. So on the last stop, they put four tires on it, but definitely doesn't like the car. Feels like it's a toe issue, but not that severe, guys. And here's our long shot, Eric Almarola to second place behind Kevin Harvick. Maybe not at the Derby, but here at Talladega, long shots can bring home the big money.
to Talladega. 52 laps to go. This has been a nail biter. We've only had two cautions for minor incidents plus the two at the end of the stages so far. Let's look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, it hasn't been the start of the season that JGR is looking for at Joe Gibbs Racing, but Denny Hamlin won the first stage uh, so far this season for himself. He's a two-time restrictor plate winner. Look for him to get back to the front and win this. Jeff Dillenhart Jr. said last year, Brad Keselowski is the best current restrictor plate racer that we have. He's won here four times, including this race a year ago. I think he gets it done, but the X Factor, one more trip to pit road for everybody. Oh, seven time. He's going for three wins out of the last four races. 48's my man. I think today is all about being different. Let's be different, let's mix it up. You guys are all picking the front runners. Denny Hamlin stayed out, used strategy, won the stage. Matt Kenseth stayed out, used strategy, led the race. This is strategy you're looking at right here. Clint Boyer is running in 35th. I'm gonna take 35th against you guys. <laughs> I'm having fun watching our little long shot. Eric Almarola, eighth here last year. Won yesterday's race. He's in Richard Petty's Ford, the 43. Long odds. I like him. So here are the pre race odds on our picks from 9 to 1. Remember, the favorite was Dale Jr. at 8 to 1, all the way down to 50 to 1. I see why you went with Almarola now, that 50 to 1. You're going to make yourself some money. Maybe. <laughs> A lot I, can happen in 50 laps. I see why you went with your pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was at the top. <laughs> hey, guys, he, everyone pitted essentially at lap 113, so that means they can go to lap 160, which will be 28 to go. But in another two laps, the window opens to pit and make it to the end. I would not be a bit surprised to see some guys gang up and come to pit road here in the next five to ten laps. Larry, I love that strategy. I love the way you're thinking, but man, I don't want to get run over trying to get on pit road. And what am I going to do with this wad of cars all around me? I'm not telling you what I'm thinking. I'm telling you what they might be thinking. <laughs> oh, son. Larry, Treacherous. We, we've not had and we've not said the big one all day. But what do the trends say, Larry? We've only had just two minor incidents all day long. We've had three caution free races here at Talladega, so this won't set a record, but. Wow. Yeah, I took a look at our last 10 Talladega spring races, Mike, and the last caution on the average comes with four laps to go. Eight times it's happened in the last, the final eight laps, and we've had four overtimes in our last 10 trips here to the spring. You know what my trend says? Gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be big. Yeah, I was going to add to that. And we have 35 cars still in the lead lap. Chances are pretty high. Oh my God. Joey Logano has taken the lead, and here comes Trevor Bain. To the outside, Brad Kozlowski to the middle, and the Fords are back in front. Isn't that something? I mean, they've cycled around. They had the Ford, Toyotas up front, the Fords up front, the Chevys up front, and here we are. A bunch of Fords leading the field again. DW, I've said this, or I've heard you say this many times. This ain't gonna work. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> How about Daniel Suarez? Well, if Almirola was a 50 to one shot, Suarez had to be what? 100 to one? I think that's a guy, Suarez, we will see him. He keeps improving week after week after week. Last week, he was three laps down. Came home in 12th place. Keep an eye on him as the season wears on. How about the 19, Vince? Well, you know, they talked to me today about the fact they've studied previous Talladega races. Look back at the stage racing at Daytona. Hard to say there's ever a right strategy, certainly not a foolproof one. But the one thing they knew for sure, they wanted experience. And you don't get experience riding in the back. Suarez ain't in the back right now, that's for sure, Matt. Vince, we are getting into that window where several teams are looking at possibly pitting in the next five or six laps. In fact, Chad Knauss has instructed Earl Barbin, the spotter, to get the 48 of Johnson down on the inside so they can start setting up when that round begins. Boy, I tell you what, I wish it was just that simple. Uh, excuse me, may I get on the inside right here? Thank you very much. It doesn't work that way. No, nope, well, that's where it's bumper to bumper and nobody giving an inch. You know, we heard on the radio earlier in this race with Keselowski and his team using a code to try to talk to him about getting down in that inside lane before they come to pit road. 
It did not work out for them. Jimmy Johnson's got to be really careful with how he gets into that inside lane and when he does it to not lose too many positions before they come on pit road. Mike, you better get that hand out the window. You better be waving those arms. You better be letting people know I'm going to pit road or you'll get run over. And you don't wait till you get to turn four. You got to start doing that going down the back. Yeah, but DW, you know, you can only see maybe, you know, two cars back can maybe see that hand out the window. It's yep. a spotter job. It, it's it's waving out the window. It's getting below that double yellow line as you come off of turn four. Jamie McMurray waving to try to get to pit road, needs to get to the inside. There's McMurray with a hand out the window. The longest shot here is the 23 of Gray Galding. The Virginia driver is on the lead lap. He's in 28th place. It's his first ever restrictor plate race in the Cup Series, and he's on the lead lap. So here come a bunch of them to make this early pit stop that they hope is their last one of the day, Matt. And several Chevrolets come, the Hendrick cars, Casey Kane, the best his cars run all day, has a lot of speed. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, he's on pit road. Chris. Chase Elliott also in, took four tires on the last stop, two tires on this stop, still saying his car is a bit edgy, but drivable, Jamie. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. just talking about the way that car has been handling. You see the tear off there to give him clear view. Right side tires for the 88. No chassis adjustments, got just enough fuel. The question will be, can they get back up to speed before the pack comes around at nearly 200 miles an hour and inhales them? Here's another group, including the Gibbs cars and the Furniture Row cars. Matt? And the Toyota's making this round of stops. The Fords are expected the next time by Truex. Look for two tires here on the 78 at this juncture is what the call is. Topping him off with fuel. Waiting on fuel. He's gone, Vince. Team of Daniel Suarez is in. Suarez getting tires on the right side has done a great job today. Just learning to get, wanting to learn and gain experience. He's kind of blocked in by the 13. Now they got to pull a little bit of fender on the right side. This is a longer stop than uh, originally planned for the 19 for sure. Long stop for Suarez. Also for Gray Galding we mentioned a minute ago. He has now gone a lap down. And here comes Denny Hamlin. Well, Denny's been out of sequence with his teammates all day long on pit strategy. Uh, he's got a couple of them there. But you know what I love? I love the way the manufacturers are working together. We had never had that for so many years. And now we got it. Matt? The 11-18 and the 20 on pit road. Ken's a nice recovery from his issues with the valve stem that was knocked off. Vince. There's the right sides going on the 18 car of Kyle Busch. He's led some of this race today, been back in the pack in the last uh, 20 laps or so, Jamie. Strategy for Denny Hamlin early on was his call, but this was an accident. They wanted to pit earlier with the other Gibbs cars, and he didn't make it to pit road, so they were out of sequence. So was his teammate, Matt Kenseth. Hamlin waited until they got that fuel so packed with Sunoco race fuel to try to go the distance here. Meanwhile, Joey Logano continues to lead the field around these first 16 cars were last on pit road about lap 113 through 115. I think they're buying a little insurance. Stay out a little bit longer. What if this thing went green, white, checkered or something like that, you know, so you kind of think about the end of the race. Well, breaking this field up into three distinct packs certainly lessens the possibility of the big one. Depends on how you look at it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was a pretty long pause there. Okay. Well, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, well, once they do come and pit, it's going to be wild and heck it, yes. hectic trying to get that track position back. The lead pack there. Here they are back here, the lead, the lead pack, and then the uh, group they're chasing down up here, up, up ahead of them, but I don't think they'll ever get there. Well, we'll see. Larry, how far can that lead pack go until they have to stop? Yeah, Mike, they could go to lap 160, which would be 28 to go. Another thing they may be doing, we went back racing with 72 to go on that last caution. If you wanted to break it in half, that way they would come with about 36 or 38 to go. So a couple different scenarios could, could unfold here. So anywhere from 2 to 12 laps from now, we could see those cars on pit road. 
What this group really would like to see is not to be double file. They want to be single file, making up as much speed as they possibly can. But you see right there, the 38s on the outside, 31. There's several cars bunched into this group, slowing that entire group down. Daniel Suarez will go a lap down as Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski catch him here. Yeah, that trouble he had in the pits, just that little bit of hesitation getting out of the pits, what caused Suarez to go uh, get a lap down here. David Reagan up to the outside. Up there with the leaders. See any hands? Any hands? Yeah, I yeah, see one. There we one. go. Here we go. We're Harvick's coming, boys. definitely coming. We're Harvick. coming. There's Logano and Keselowski. We're all coming. Almarola. Most of that inside line. We'll head for Pit Road this time, as Larry pointed out. And it looks like Reagan will stay out and assume the lead. Or nope, he's coming too. Pretty yep. risky. But he did a nice job. Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, the Penske cars lead them on to Pit Road. Matt? So Ford would be proud about how the different teams with the Ford brand working together. They were told Boyer was to hustle it on Pit Road. They're looking at four tires. Going to go four tires on the four of Harvick as well. Solid stops on both cars, Vince. Brad Keselowski wants a drink and a clean windshield. They take care of that. It's going to be a four-tire change as well, Jamie. Joey Logano has led 10 laps so far today. A two-time winner here at Talladega. Car's been loose all day, but they've gotten it better. It's just a tick tight, not perfect, not bad. And the 17, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., you saw them applauding. Good stop for him. 31 and Newman's had good speed today. Minimal changes. So Elliott Sadler driving for Tommy Baldwin, only his second start of the year. He has picked up the lead. And now Sadler will pit that Chevrolet and turn the lead over to Ricky Stenhouse. 38 laps to go in Talladega. The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Carfax. Find the cars you want, avoid the ones you don't. Shop used cars with confidence at Carfax.com. And by Toyota. Let's go places.
Kyle Busch, the new leader. Here's your Coca-Cola Racing Family update. Denny Hamlin in second, Joey Logano 14th. And on the lead lap, Danica Patrick, Austin Dillon, and Ryan Newman. Daniel Suarez uh, now also on the lead lap after pit stops have been completed. That quick stop by the 18 crew for Kyle Busch has made the difference and now put him out front. There are two packs of lead lap cars, that second pack with just six, and the front pack with the first 32 cars or so. And that's how it shakes out here after what they hope will be their final pit stop, coming around to 33 laps to go. I'll tell you, those Toyota guys, they really nailed their strategy. This uh, They didn't do well at Daytona, but they nailed it today, and they're running a top five right now. Before pit stops, Kyle Busch was outside the top 10. Yeah, all those that are up front, what, I think it's our top 10 or 12, all took two tires on that last stop. So look to see if four tires play. I think Logano's maybe the first one with four tires. The, the, the 48 also has four tires. So look to see if that maneuverability you talked about, DW, yeah. with four tires really plays a factor at the end of this race. I can just do so much more with my car, particularly in traffic, if I've got four good tires. Let's take a look at those green flag pit stops and what this will be, the two laps, including the trip to pit road. You can see right there, Kyle Busch and that 18 car. That's their time there. Now their two tire pit stop was under eight seconds. Denny Hamlin, two tires as well, but he was at well over nine seconds. But all of these drivers here pretty much going with just right side tires. Hey, don't you think that variance in time is just how long you stay hooked up with the fuel can? Well, and I think also on that interest of pit road, because we, we saw a lot of drivers scrambling, getting down to pit road speed, getting on the pit road. So I think that's also a variable, DW. 32 laps to go, five Toyotas out front, then two Chevys and three Fords in the top 10.
The Geico 500 on Fox is sponsored by Baywatch, starring Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron in theaters everywhere May 25th. Rated R. And rated E for excitement and an eBay Motors race break with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, 28 laps to go from Talladega Super Speedway. And we have a wreck. We've only had four cautions so far today. We have not had the big one yet. And we got lucky there because crashed right out of the middle of the pack was Ryan Blaney. Blaney into the outside wall. You see tremendous damage there to the 21 car. It brings out the fifth caution. Ryan Blaney, one of the young drivers battling this race. And you can tell, Chris, earlier, we saw just the minorest of bumps turn guys sideways. We saw it from teammates early. You can see Blaney on top of the schedule there on the top of the track. The green car is a lap car. He squeezes in between, tries to squeeze in between the lap car and not make the, making the pass. He got hit by the 17 when he was trying to squeeze in between Keselowski and the 23 car of Gray Galding. Gray Galding, the youngest driver in the field at age 19 and talking about the 17 car. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the pole sitter who led his first laps of the season earlier today. Watch Blaney change lanes up ahead. He got clipped by Kozlowski. They made contact and then into the outside wall. So the hole closed up on him because of that slow car. Galding had just left pit road and watch the 17. Just the same time as the two cut up the track, the 17 in the back of Blaney. It was just a chain reaction event there, Chris. So our fifth caution now and multiple cars involved and that's something we really hadn't seen, although it's always on the mind of the driver here and they've all talked about it. Yeah, and coming to pit road will be the 17 car. You can see a lot of damage there to the front of that car. He led early as a fast Ford. There's Clint Boyer. We talked about him early being back in 35th. He is now up inside the top 20, so he knows it's go time. And that's what we're going to see now, Chris. All these guys pushing harder and harder because every position matters as we tick down toward the checkered flag. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. started on the front row, uh, was as far back as uh, 20 so, and now he's moved back up to around 12, 13 as they juxtapose. The crash clock is in play now with some of the cars that we've seen here. And as you have said, the pits are open. Remember this, six of the last 10 races here at Talladega have gone to overtime. We have inside 27 laps to go. Well, Larry McReynolds likes to say you got what you got if you're a front runner, but you can see Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kinson, also, Jimmy Paul Johnson. Menard, all these cars coming to pit road. I like getting tires right here, Matt. I love that. And when you go back to his history, it seems like the past year or so, Johnson has been really free in the draft. And that's what he's saying to Chad Canals. When business picks up, it's going to get really free. Needs to be much tighter for this run at the finish, Jamie. Eric Almirola really happy with the cars that he found something in three and four, but he likes his car definitely on four tires, so they want to do that this time. You see the 17, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the left side knocking it out there. That damage on the nose started on the pole today for just the second time in his career. Looking it over, making sure they'll clear it so he can get back out on track and finish this. You see the bear bond going on now. Thank you, Jamie. We had Fords in control early. Toyota's taking control momentarily. And now with 26 laps to go under caution, that's your eBay Motors race break. We will have more from Talladega in just a moment. Yes, sir.
Ryan Blaney has gone to the garage area. Let's take a look from the blimp. You'll see Gray Galding backing up on the outside, but watch the bottom inside two yeah, lanes. Yeah, and also watch Denny Hamlin right there. He kind of gets shuffled, and it's going to stack this line up behind him all the way to Jimmy Johnson. Keselowski, you see the red car there of Blaney trying to squeeze underneath Gray Galding. Gets into the corner panel of the two car. That allows the 17 to get in the back of the 21 and turn him into the outside wall. So caution is out with 25 laps to go in Talladega. Once the pace car hits pit road, they'll come to the line to take the green flag with 23 laps to go. Kyle Busch's Toyota, Chase Elliott Chevrolet, Toyota's for Truex, Hamlin, and Jones, Logano's Ford, and the Chevys of Almendinger, Kane, and Earnhardt. Trevor Baines Ford rounds out the top 10. 34 cars on the lead lap. Greg Galding got the free pass. Ryan Blaney went to the garage. Oh. Green flag, 23 to go in the Geico 500. And the Thunder Rose. <laughs> Already three wide going down into turn one. Whoa. AJ Allmendinger and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Where did they come and from? And McMurray. <laughs> Look at them all going by him. Truex just seven, can't yeah, get up can't, to speed. He, he's he sort of stuck. Poor, uh, poor Eric Jones stuck behind the 78. He can't go anywhere either. Well, that inside line just moved. Wow, that got crazy. How quick things change. And like DW, what'd you just say to me? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> right, pal. This one, it gets good. Well, if Kyle Busch stays out front, it'll be his pit crew that won him this race. He was outside the top 10 when he pitted under green, and when the green flag pit cycle was over, he was the leader. I think the thing to watch is some of those guys that came and got four tires. I still think that could be a factor for Mr. Feelgoods. Would be pretty nice to have right now. Starting with Joey Logano, who's in fourth place. Number 22.
You know, Mike, all that, you know, giving and taking, which we haven't seen a whole lot of giving, we've seen quite a bit of taking. It just gets serious. But this is when it gets really serious. Now it's take. Don't give. All take just from here. Take. <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse is back up to speed. He clears the crash clock. One of the reasons why the, the big wrecks happened in these closing laps like this is because when you saw earlier cars bump drafting, they were being light. They were taking it easy. They were checking up. There's no more checking up. Now, when you go to give a bump draft, it's a huge shot. It's a shove. And what does that do? That turns somebody sideways. Yeah, your intentions is to move that guy. And hopefully it'll be straight ahead, but it may not be. So here we are, 21 laps to go. We're right back where we started. Single file at the front, two by two for a couple of rows, and triple wide all the way back. A.J. Allmendinger climbs to third. Taylor Vince. Hunt Jr. is ready to go. That's right, Mike Allmendinger started 27th, and he showed a knack at these play tracks. He was fifth here at Talladega before. He was third in the season opener this year at the Daytona 500. Maybe one of those guys you'd consider a long shot at the beginning of the race, but here we are with 21 to go right in the mix. He says it's a little bit of a handful when he's around other cars in the pack. Chris? Well, Vince, for most of the race, Chase Elliott has been stuck mid-pack. He's saying, I can't do anything because it's been three wide. Well, now he's out front. He's pretty happy with his race car. He said, back in the pack, it was a bit edgy, but as soon as he could get, get some clean air on that car, he said, I think we're going to have a fast race car. His uh, spotter, Eddie DeHunt, just told him, it's time oh, to be greedy. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, oh, there oh, we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, upside, upside down. Upside. Well, AJ, that was a humdinger. Yes, it was, and that's uh, there he is upside down, and I hope, hope he's all right. I see him moving around in there. I don't think there's any issue with him. Yeah, you just can't push on the left side of that rear bumper. Well, you just can't keep pushing. He got into the 24 and just kept on pushing. But, Mike, I'm telling you, I started my first racer in 1972. This was what I worried about. 1972, 45 years ago, and here we are. The more things change, <laughs> The more they stay the same. Uh, AJ tried to put the window net down to signal to the safety crews he's okay, but with the car upside down, it won't go down. Wow, the three uh, cars got a lot of. Austin I mean, Dillon, Michael yeah, he, McDowell. He hit one of those cars that was upside down. I don't remember if it was Chase Elliott. Like Danica said there, her car is torn up. I don't know how many cars are in this thing, uh, probably 15 of them. I was just you just gonna... saw it coming, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you, just saw, you saw Allmendinger get that big run, gets to the rear bumper of the 24 car. They've told A.J. Allmendinger to stay strapped in the car. Uh, apparently he's okay because they are going to roll the car over uh, before he's allowed to get out. We do have a camera inside the car, uh, but the antenna is on the roof and that's gone. So no signal from there. They do, and this is something these guys have practiced. These safety crews have practiced. They have a system that they hook the car up to. They don't want to just flop the car over with the driver inside of it. They will pick the car up and roll it over gently. The field has been stopped down in turn number one. Michael McDowell climbs out. He's okay. His car obviously is not. That's, a, that's not much of a field. That's kind of half of a field. Austin Dillon is okay. Danica Patrick's car stopped there with more damage. Yesterday we saw two red flags. Yep. Today we're going to see another. That, that's become one of the more popular flags at this place. And the line that separates victory from calamity at Talladega is so fine. And the amount of a push that either results in a pass or results in panic is just so minuscule. Yeah, especially when you're in that section of the corner where the, the banking starts to flatten out. The cars get pretty light in the back there, so if you're gonna be pushing, you've gotta sort of back off them or you gotta to get to the right side of that rear bumper if you're gonna push in that area. Now, Trevor Bain drives away. He can't go anywhere because of the red flag, but he's eligible to return to the pits and once he gets on to pit road, they'll have five minutes to make repairs. And here's Almendinger's car getting up on its side and they'll put it back on his wheels before uh, he unstraps and climbs out.
Jeff they say that when these cars are at speed in the banking at this speed you could reach out with your finger and push on the corner of the car and spin it around. It, it's pretty easy. I will say it might not be that easy, but okay. it, it's pretty easy. I mean, you know, when you have a 3,400 pound car pushing you, it doesn't take much, but there's also just not a lot of aerodynamic downforce in the cars here. The cars aren't set up for that with the springs and shocks. Also in that section of the corner, once you get out of the, the banking holds the car and it has a lot of grip in the banking, but once you get to the straightaway, it loses all of that. Randall Burnett, AJ's crew chief, looking at the monitor as uh, Almendinger has climbed out of his car and walks to the ambulance without assistance. He is okay. Uh, so now we'll show you replays of what happened between he and Chase Elliott in the 24. Yeah, you just see uh, AJ, he gets up against the 24 here. He's pushing him, pushing him, pushing him, uh, and he just gets over to the to the right hand, uh, left hand side here, and you can't push over there. He even got him himself. He was, you know, it was not something that was intentional. He was just trying to push and help, but it actually even got AJ Allmendinger turned around as, uh, also. Wow, look oh, at big Danica. impact by Danica well, into that heck, inside wall. Heck of a lick. Didn't that happen to her at Daytona where she got into yeah. the inside wall and hit hard where a wall jutted out like that? Now, see, I think Chase Elliott was already, he already had his hands full prior to that. He was trying to get it gathered up, and then A.J. came off his rear bumper and then made contact with him again. Also, Logano went for a heck of a ride there, a couple big impacts. Keselowski's up in there. Minor damage for uh, Kevin Harvick. And here is the initial contact. You see Chase's car yawed out just a tiny bit in the corner. They got him loose. That, that's the one. He was going to save it till that last little bump. I was just going to say, AJ, hey, just be a little patient here. We got a little ways to go yet, and uh, you got a pretty good car. Wow. In a moment. This is amazing footage, folks. Incredible camera work. And just remember, there's a driver in every one of those cars. Watch it. Well, that's a long, slow roll for Almendinger. That and is. look, both those cars end up pretty much together along with the mess that was Logano's car and Michael McDowell's. Harvick had damage in that, so did Trevor Bain, Eric Jones, Matt Kenseth, all involved. And as a driver, I, I've been upside down at Daytona one time and slid on my roof just like that, with sparks flying, and I was just hoping at the last second it was going to roll back over so I could get out. But uh, AJ's didn't do that. He was stuck upside down. Not a comforting feeling. That oil tank is right behind you. It's very possible for oil to start leaking out. You want to get out of there as fast as you can. Looks like there were only about a dozen cars who had a chance to evade to the inside and not get any damage in this. I'm watching that, watching that green two car. I, I don't know. If He's just kind of following us through here. Not sure if he got any damage or not. Yeah, I think I saw him stop a little bit too soon as if he made contact. He may hit the outside wall at the right side of the car. Let's ride with Danica Patrick. Second, second, back it back down. Stay low, 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 low. Inside, inside, inside. 32 never shot. Oh, boy. Boy, that was a lick. Man. She's still driving it, even after that second impact. With Dale Jr. One outside, 77's outside. Keep coming, low, 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 Talladega, world's fastest junkyard. Man. And what caused that 24 to get up in the air, it's not just air getting under the car. Somebody made contact and, and, and an impact on the right side. When that did that, it lifted that left side up. I think it was the 22 of Logano, and then the air got underneath the car, got him up in the air. Look at the tire marks, and you see our, I believe that's our Fox camera under the caution light there. Here are the drivers who had at least some damage from this lap 169 crash. 
We are under the red flag, so no work can be done until the yellow waves again. Now, there's the front of Harvick's car. You see the left front yeah. did get some damage. Yeah, Keselowski. Yeah, Keselowski, sure Keselowski, Keselowski yeah. rather. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, here in 2003, we had a 23-car pileup, 27-car pileup. In uh, 2012, we had a 25-car pileup. And I'm not sure how many are involved in this one just yet. 16 cars on that list. Let's check down at the Hollywood Hotel for a race recap. Thanks, Mike. With uh, Michael Waltrip here, just recapping what went on earlier. Jamie McMurray and the teammate and points leader Kyle Larson. This was way back on lap 15. Larson has a tire problem. That brings out a caution as Brad Kozlowski wins stage one, the second stage victory for him this season. On lap 100, Dale Earnhardt Jr. started on the front row. Close call with Clint Boyer. Just another near miss. This pack racing has been wild today. These guys have done a great job avoiding contact up until now. But you can see how close they race and how desperate they are for every position. Denny Hamlin currently second behind Kyle Busch with the red flag. He won stage two. Jimmy Johnson a close call. Wow. Wiggling at 200 miles per hour. And look at that. That car is nearly out of control. Jimmy, seven-time champion, drove like one there to keep it going in the right direction. Denny Hamlin's led the most laps, followed by Kozlowski. And then Ryan Blaney, first time that we had, we had a few cautions. This was the brought out the fifth, but Blaney involved with Kozlowski. And then moments ago, 16 cars involved with 20 laps to go. And Almondinger and Chase Elliott. Chase looked like maybe just was a little bit free off the corner, and that allowed Almondinger to hit him in the back. And wow, you're talking about a track blocker. That's just taking those cars and flipping them around like they're toys. It shakes up. Yeah, they look like uh, matchbox cars in a uh, in a dryer getting bounced around. And the early reports of drivers being able to walk away are all very encouraging when you look at the carnage from 16 cars at the speeds that they're going. Logano, Truex, Kozlowski all involved. Harvick, Matt Kenseth. Yeah, and you saw some notables that slipped by there. Jimmy Johnson, Dell Jr., and Eric Amarola, Eric won the race yesterday. He's got a really fast forward. He's able to miss this accident. And then remember also, look at that. That car has climbed on top of that outside wall. Harvick with contact. Almondinger over. Chase That's Elliott nearly over as well in that 24 car. And look, sleeping by, sneaking by on the bottom. That's the 14 of Clint Boyer. Remember, he was laying back earlier trying to miss the melee. It worked for him. And you saw it in real time. And now we're showing you a number of different angles as we replay this, so that's Elliott in the 24 going up on the wheels on the wall and, and the FedEx car of Denny Hamlin racing in front of us. And let's check in with someone involved. Chris Neville is with Austin Dillon. Yeah, just released from the infield care center down here in Austin. You were a little bit further back in the pack there. What did you see? I just saw somebody come across the field there and um, started checking up and I got kind of pushed back into it. I mean, it was uh, it's just Talladega. It's part of it. We're three wide, trying to get as much position as we can there at the end. And um, we were just too far back, and we missed. We didn't get it. We got in it. So um, hopefully uh, one of our RCR ECR teammates can make it up through there. I think the 13 just had bailed out because he felt like it was getting wild, and it worked out for him. So maybe Ty can get it done. Thanks, Austin. All right, and we're just getting word. Thank you very much for that. That Chase uh, Elliott in the 24 and Eric Jones in the 77 eliminated from the race because they were continuing to drive when the red flag came out. They had bigger problems than that, though, <laughs> Chris. That 24 car was not repairable, so he was just trying to get home. They were probably yeah, just trying to react to what was going on. Let's check back in with Chris Neville. Well, Joey Logano also released down here. Joey, it was a hard hit last year, another hard hit this year. You okay? Hey, yeah, I'm fine. It uh, kind of sucks, but it's... Uh, is what it is. That's just uh, super speedway racing. Um, just looked like Chase. I don't really know what happened, but I just saw him tank slapping it down the back stretch, and I was hoping he was going to go to the left and uh, go towards the inside. But instead, it came up, and it was not his fault. It's just part of it. And uh, we were the first one to him, um, and just KO the front of our Shell Penzo Ford. So um, yeah, it kind of stinks, but you know, it, it is what it is. We'll uh, you know go on to the next week. Thanks, Joey. Well, last year in this race, we had 36 of the 40 cars that had some kind of damage. By the end of the race, we have at least 20 in the field so far today. And let's listen in. You saw the 24 car go into the air. And let's listen in on the radio communication of Chase Elliott. Was that my bad? No, that wasn't your bad. He just shoved you so hard, he got you twisted up. 
you get a lot of momentum from drafting from behind, and Chase came off that corner with a little bit more momentum than he had before, and it looked like maybe the car just stepped out a bit, and Almendinger hard on the gas into the back of Elliott, and that caused this crash. Kevin Harvick also caught up in this in the four car. Let's listen in to that transmission. He has spent 15 laps in this race. Ali, that was close to being through there. Thought you made it. Couldn't tell who it was in the 47 got out of the roof. I saw the 47 and the 24 roof numbers in my mirror. And speaking of A.J. Allmendinger in the 47, let's go back to Chris Neville. Yeah, boy, pretty scary moment on the back straightaway there. A.J. Allmendinger upside down. A.J., what happened there? Uh, just battling for the lead, you know. Uh, kind of the, the 18 and the 24 kind of were leading the, the two packs, and the four was just on me. And, uh, you know, once I got to chase, I, I got loose. I tried to, as we can see, I barely tapped him. Uh, and then I tried to get off him, and that point it was too late you know just uh one of those things battling for the lead and uh the plan kind of went we, we waited the back and and uh started moving forward there and and the way the pit cycles worked we were up front had a great restart um had the right guys pushing me so i uh, can't thank everybody at a race team enough and and kroger and Clicklist and everybody that's part of this um uh, hated that that happened it's talladega i uh not a big fan of it but you're up front you got a chance to go forward and and um Racing happens, I guess, here, if we call that. Good to see you're okay. Thanks, AJ. Not a big fan of it. Glad that AJ Almendinger is okay. Did he take enough responsibility, Michael, for triggering this? Well, you see the two of those guys discussing it. Uh, it's hard to say not being inside the car, but it looked like he got a lot of momentum on Chase off the corner. And generally, the only way that would happen is if Chase lost a little bit of traction. So you just you just wonder if that car turned a little bit on him. It'll be interesting to hear Chase's uh, opinion on what happened. But certainly there was contact from AJ into Chase, but I don't know what precipitated it. Well, and, and Almendinger said, I just tapped him. We saw drivers earlier at 200 miles an hour wiggle and save the situation, but in this case... That was unsavable. He was in a bad position right off the corner. The cars are already light there anyway. Yeah, all right, let's go back to Chris Neville, who's with Chase Elliott. Yeah, and Chase Elliott also out of the infield care center. Chase, we just saw you and AJ talking. What were you guys talking about? Uh, he just apologized. I mean, I, I don't know uh, that it was really his fault per se. I mean, I, I think uh, he had a big run, and he kind of got to my bumper and just happened to be in a bad spot, kind of coming up off the corner and, and was skewed a little bit to my left rear. And, and when that happens, it just unloads these cars too much. But um, I appreciate everybody's hard work. Our, our Hooters Chevrolet was, was really good today. Uh, we were able to work our way up towards the front a, a couple times, got hung out a couple times, and, and finally made our way back forward. So really proud of that. Uh, hopefully we can carry some of this speed back to Daytona for the plate race in July and go get them next week at Kansas. Thanks, Chase. All right, 19 laps to go under the red flag now, reaching uh, 15 minutes. Kyle Busch, your leader, followed by Denny Hamlin and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. Well, A.J. Allmendinger says, well, I didn't get into him that hard, and Chase says, well, I was a little loose off the corner. So if you're that second driver, can you really tell how loose or if the driver ahead of you is loose when you've got that head of steam and you're both coming off the corner like that. Well, it was a light tap that ended up turning Chase Elliott, but it was the big push that happened about 50 feet before that that got Chase into that situation. And so Amandine was sort of driving his uh, the 24's car of Chase Elliott. As they come off that transition, as a driver, you've got to recognize he's in a vulnerable position and you've got to check up and back up. But it's hard because you've got them coming behind you. You can't check Check up much, or you might get run over from behind. You know, Mike, we look at it, some things that happen. We say, well, that's unacceptable. But to those drivers, they, they start this race, and I've said it over and over, they start this race knowing that is exactly what could happen here because most of the time it does. So what we think is unacceptable to the, up here is perfectly all right with those drivers. Well, I winced when I saw Danica Patrick go into that wall because this was all too reminiscent of what happened to her back in Daytona in the qualifying race. This is 2012. Just an incredibly hard shot. Yes, there is safer barrier there. And then here's what just happened to her number 10 as it went off the front bumper of another car and into that end wall uh, where the wall protrudes to allow for 
an opening there. Chris Neville. Yeah, Mike, you remember the Daytona 500 this year. Uh, you also had a bit of an inside wall hit like that. You okay? Yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm, you know, NASCAR is always on, always making efforts to make the cars more and more safe. So I'm fine. Um, definitely wasn't as big as last year. That was really, really bad. Um, but yeah, more than anything, I just, it's just a bummer to be, you know, part of part of an accident and not even kind of be the core of the accident. Um, so it looks like I thought somebody clipped me from behind, but it looks like I came down in front of somebody else and um, I, c I couldn't see anything. And my spotter just kept saying, go low, go low. And it's hard to trust them sometimes where you're like, they can see more than I can see right now. So um, I just kind of was gradually coming low and, and uh, obviously he didn't see me. So um, <clears throat> uh, the Aspen Dental Ford was good. We got stage points in the first round and kind of thought, I've had, every, I've had stage points every time in these races so far in super speedways, but um, we were close uh, the second second round, and then, um, you know, you know, everyone knows how these races go at the end, and we had all the cars left pretty much. There was, there was no accidents, and everybody was driving really reasonable. I thought everyone was driving, you know, hard, but not stupid, and so, you know, everything was pretty, pretty good until that very end there, but it's imaginable it's coming. I was just at the wrong place at the right, wrong time, and you know, yeah, just don't, don't have anything to show for at the end of the day. So, bummer for sure. Thanks, Danica. Larry, it's no accident that these drivers are able to climb out and walk away. Mike, Danica is absolutely right. Based on some of the wrecks that you saw that she has had, and Kyle Busch's wreck a year and a half ago at Daytona, NASCAR did a lot of things this year to the Daytona Talladega package. This is called the Driver Intrusion Package. This is much heavier steel. This was already there, this part here, but behind the door and in front of the door, a much heavier steel. And it goes even further than that. Look right here at the firewall area. Look here underneath. In other words, the entire cocoon that that driver's sitting on has much heavier steel. And then this really came from Kyle Busch's wreck. That tow board right there, it's a heavy honey honeycomb material that helps protect the driver's feet. She's absolutely right. They never quit working on this. This is mandatory this year, Daytona Talladega, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, as well as the Xfinity Series. And when something like this happens, you really count on those safety innovations to both the track and these race cars. A wild ride for Chase Elliott and others and A.J. Allmendinger. Now among those swept up in this was Trevor Bain. You'll see his number six from the blimp. Coming in from the right side. There he is up against Martin Truex. And nowhere to go. Chris Neville. Man, Trevor, it looked like you were about 10 rows back there on the outside. What did you see? Uh, days of thunder smoke, I think. Uh, I wasn't trying to drive through it contrary to where the video looks. I tried to get checked up, and you don't have very good brakes at super speedways, but I was on them as soon as I saw the smoke there, and uh, you know, it's just really hard to navigate. I stayed up high, hoping that it would kind of hit the wall and wash down, and it didn't. It stayed right up, right in front of me, and I couldn't see what I was driving into, but man, we had a really fast forward this weekend, and uh, we qualified well with it. We ran up front all day and did all the things we needed to do. One run, we saved fuel, we were able to lead laps. Uh, so I'm really proud of the Savvy Care team hate we don't get the result, you know, but I had a lot of fun today. I feel like we ran a smart race, put ourselves in position a lot. Uh, we just aren't going to get the result. I tried to sit in the car and convince the officials to let me stay in and finish the race. Um, so that's why it took me so long to get over here. But uh, I had an oil leak, and so they wanted me to bring it behind the wall. And once I got out, there was no chance we were going to make any more laps. Thanks, Trevor. So Trevor Bain joins Chase Elliott, Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Danica Patrick, A.J. Allmendinger, and Eric Jones. Chris? And Eric Jones now released from the care center. Eric, I see you walking with a little bit of a limp there. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. My uh, heel's just a little bit hot from the race and uh, hard to step on them when they're cooking you. But uh, no, I'm fine. It's just, it's unfortunate. You know, I thought we had a good run going today and I thought we had a 
car that was definitely capable of running up in the top 10. But uh, I was up on the high side and saw the 24 get loose and just can't really do much. You know, there's no real, really to go. So tried to avoid it, but got caught up in it. And uh, I think a car could, probably could have went back out, but uh, we ended up busting a radiator in the, in the whole mess. So it kind of ended our day, but the Toyota Care Camry was good. Um, just wish we could have got the result and went up there and ran and tried to contend for a win. Thanks, Eric. Well, you know how the song goes. In Birmingham, they love the governor. In Talladega, they love their racing. The infield and the grandstand are full because you never know what lurks around the next turn. Red flag at Talladega. If you want some more Leonard Skinner, come to the Coke 600. They'll be there. All right. I love but Leonard here, Skinner. 16 cars are piled up. Uh, one of the in-car views you saw was that of Cole Witt, and it looked like uh, he got minor damage. He's one of the cars still out there. Let's take a look at the Arctic Cooler Chevrolet. Well, that's what's always something about these wrecks. We see big damage, cars getting gathered up in it and then those that make it through some way somehow i heard one little hit there from trevor bain but not a whole lot neat sponsor they're new to the sport and they only sell that product online at here's, their website here's one that just barely made it through Woo, that was close the pied piper <laughs> and, and the seas parted and on he drove <laughs> he is third behind kyle bush and denny hamlin Ahead of Jamie McMurray, Paul Menard, Jimmy Johnson, Bush, Boiler, uh, Boyer, Al Marola, and Stenhouse are the top and 10 right and now. You can look right there on the 41. There's a right front damage. Yeah, you see some damage right there. That's pretty sick. Kurt Bush, they're definitely going to have to come down pit road and fix that. Next Saturday night, we go to Kansas on FS1. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to the Midwest for some down and dirty Kansas style racing in the Sunflower State. Which driver will follow the yellow brick road to victory? Find out Saturday. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. Eastern on FS1. That should be a lot of fun on FS1. Here you see the damage to Matt Kenseth's car. Um, he was right in the middle of that. That's not as much damage as I feared for him. So let's talk to some crew chiefs under the red flag here. Vince Welch. And we'll begin with the man who will restart in the lead, and that's Kyle Busch. His crew chief is Adam Stevens. You guys have been out front at different times throughout the course of the day. Does the car work best when it's out front? We'd like to think that it would, but how about when it gets back in the pack? Can you still come through if necessary? Uh, it always works best out front. Uh, the Skittles camera has been pretty fast today, but track position is hard to keep and hard to come by. So uh, we got a little aggressive with the pit strategy there and, and got out in front of our teammates, uh, which was a good move, and, and it's paying dividends right now. But there's so many laps left. Uh, it's too close to call. Jamie? And Mike Wheeler uh, on the pit box for Denny Hamlin. You guys will restart second. How about the spotter input there, your driver's reaction? You couldn't have gotten closer to the big one and just narrowly escaped. Yeah, everyone did a good job there. We were uh, fortunate that the circumstances got us a little bit more room, or as much room as we needed to get by that. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty close. 
Well, you guys have run in the back, you've run up front, you've run on the inside, the outside. At this point in the race, where does your driver feel most comfortable and the best line's going to be? Uh, I know he wants to be up front. You know, end of the day, you uh, you get better, you know, clean air, helps the car stick a little bit better, allows you to move around. So I know he wants to be, in, you know, front top two positions in order to uh, make some moves when he need to. But I'm sure he'd be happy following 18 car to the last lap or so. Uh, so hopefully he can keep it in the top two. He's definitely had a lot of talk about staying in that middle line when he hooks up with his teammate again, guys. Thanks, Jamie. The yellow flag is displayed. The cars are fired and work can resume on pit road. Kevin Harvick's car under repair. And we know some of these cars will be stopping for crash damage as Brad Kozlowski's crew working on the left front corner. I think that two cars in pretty good shape. He did a nice job of driving right along with that wreck, never hit anything too hard. They may be able to get this thing going. You know what I love in these situations is they can't work on the car, but boy, they can prepare on all the things they need to do. <laughs> Look at hey, this. They're on top of the hood. hood. <laughs> you know, back in the days when NASCAR allowed engine changes, uh, Daryl Waltrip's crew, the Digard crew, lined up all the parts needed so that they ended up replacing an engine in under 14 minutes. 11 minutes to be oh, exact. wow. And we still finished in the top 12, I think it was. These mechanics are unbelievable and just what they're capable of doing with the tools that they have. A 27-minute red flag, but now repairs underway. Matt? And Mike Clint Boyer may be coming to pit road for tires. He thought he might have run over something, some kind of debris. But while he was under that red flag, Boyer took advantage and was multitasking his post-race plans. And at the end of the day, I hit a hell of a bump down there, too. I mean, that's what I was going to tell you. Really, it was big. That it dukes a hazard disc stuff. <laughs> you never know where Boyer's going with well, some I, of those things. We'll have to find out next week yeah. what he was talking about, because I ain't got a clue. <laughs> Ran over something. He something was talking about big. Dukes of Hazard. I guess when they General Lee went through through the air, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, David Reagan's car under heavy repair. Well, there are the all-time big ones in terms of number of cars involved. 16 officially involved today. We have 19 laps to go. Here's a Budweiser race summary for the 169 laps so far. Kyle Busch, the first of 34 cars on the lead lap. Only 14 different leaders today, 25 lead changes. 88 is the record. Six caution flags, so far 25 laps, one red flag. Brad Kozlowski, Denny Hamlin, the stage winners. What did you notice about all those big wrecks? All of them were in the spring but one. All those races that uh, you know, those major pileups with a lot of cars torn up were all spring races, except for one. It was a full moon last night. <laughs> yes, it was. Pit roads open. I wonder if fuel's going to be a concern. Yesterday in the ARCA race, if it went the scheduled distance, the 88 won. But since they went to overtime, the leader ran out of gas. Did not go to victory lane. Well, got a bunch of them on pit road, mostly with crash damage of one sort or another. Yeah, I think I'd want to come in and, you know, you lock up your tires, slid your tires, whatever, get some tires on these things and clean them up and get them ready for the shootout. Well, now the drivers, the four drivers in front got fuel at lap 144 and 146. If they are questionable on whether they can go the distance, running the racing line at the top or at the bottom of the racetrack could come into play here. Seems the bottom line is about 260 feet shorter than the top line. So if you run the high line, you go an extra 2.2 miles on a tank of fuel. If you have enough fuel, that is. Yeah, this, this is, uh, this is uh, Jeff and I had this discussion at the end of the race at Talladega, if you are at the Daytona, remember, about high line versus low line. That's in a perfect world. Uh, I mean, if you could do a perfect world, you run the high, I'll run the bottom, it might work out that way. But there's a lot of factors that go into all that. Yeah, right? we're not in a perfect world. We're at Talladega. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And, and, but this scenario definitely played out in Daytona where we started seeing cars fall out at the end of that race because they're running out of fuel. And uh, we might not see that play out here today, but uh, this is a wide racetrack, and that's quite a bit of distance. Chris Neville. Yeah, Martin Truex Jr. were the last drivers to leave the infield care center here. It looked like you guys were trying to fix the car and get yourself back out there. What was it that you guys couldn't get repaired? 
Yeah, I guess they ended up uh, having just too big of an oil leak or something like that. So um, they looked at it for a while, thought maybe it was just a line, they'd be able to replace it. But, you know, as they got looking at it closer, it was uh, detrimental. So you know, a tough day for us. You know, I think, um, man, our best pro shops, Tracker Boats, Toyota was just unbelievable today. It was so fast and felt like we, uh, we were in pretty good position most of the day. I got shuffled to the outside one time there and got in a bad spot, and then they started wrecking. So it's a shame. It's the way it goes here. Uh, unfortunately for us, it's it's been a tough one to finish, but uh, we did get some good stage points today, so that's a bonus. And uh, at least it's better than uh, running all day and crashing out and not getting anything. So uh, all in all, I mean, it's just one of those deals is Talladega. So look forward to uh, Kansas next week for sure. Thanks, Martin. Yeah. Martin Truex, one of nine of the 16 drivers involved in this crash, out of the race after A.J. Allmendinger got into the back of Chase Elliott and mayhem ensued. There's the accident scene in the back straightaway. Hey, uh, this year's all-star race, it's going to be a monster. May 19th and 20th, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Go to their website for tickets or call 1-800-455-FANS. Come be an all-star. When they tell you to bring that baby on pit road, you better hang on to your helmet. Uh-huh. Today's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. There's the Pied Piper, Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of three cars just ahead of this crash. who made it through along with Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin. Yeah, the left front tire is flat. Then it looks fine. It's weird driving. That hit feels like it's flat too. <laughs> it does. Sixteen laps to go. 
Oh, these will be the common, you know, these guys will settle down now. Uh, right? Just bring her <laughs> on to the house, right? 25 cars on the lead lap. Anything but. <laughs> and nobody's leaving their seats. Nobody's sitting down in them either. <laughs> That's right. They used them much today. <laughs> Green flag. Kind of blown Landon engine. Castle pulled off to the inside. A lot of smoke down there. Not sure what that's all about. I do know one thing. Kyle Busch got a heck of a jump on that start. He was ready. Yes, he did. But Hamlin has Earnhardt and Menard right up his tailpipe. Now you saw right there, D uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Denny Hamlin, very si similar situation with Almondinger on Chase Elliott that caused that crash. But somehow they seem to manage to get together in a way that just gave him that big push. Well, did you see how squirrely Dale Jr.'s car was as he got up into the back of the 11 car? Landon Castle very slow in the back straightaway. Not sure he's going to be able to make it around. Junior's car's moving around quite a bit. Well, I'm he's not sure if. Uh... Well, what's I, going on? Yeah, I, I think maybe there's something, does have a tire I think there's going something down. problem right there. McMurray up the middle. Yeah, he's having a big Stand problem high, going into turn one. Here. Couple more here. Couple more. Stay way up there if you can, please. Uh, it's so close. Hanging way back back here. You need to pay it or you're going to ride it out. I got a wheel coming off. Coming in. Oh. Yes. After yeah, he better hope he makes it back to the pit road and that thing doesn't explode and tear the fender off of the car. There's Castle down on the apron. He I don't might he's make it make to it. pit road if he doesn't. That caution might save Earnhardt. Wow, big move by oh, oh. Kyle Busch all the way to the bottom. Woo. That's going to allow Danny Hamlin to get to the outside. Those two Toyotas right now, those teammates... Strong. They're not teammates anymore. Right it's there. on. Whoa! Big squeeze there by Jimmy Johnson going underneath McMurray. That got really dicey. Joe Gibbs Racing has not been to Victory Lane this year. Hamlin last week at Richmond said they lacked speed. That's not the case today. Dale Jr. makes it to his pit. And he'll go a lap down. As they come by. Oh, that's a shame. He was in great position to Landon, have a shot at this. Landon Castle believes they've uh, broken a drive shaft. Push out front. There you go, back one lap as Hamlin lays back trying to get a run with McMurray. Yeah, he gets a big push from McMurray. Bush goes down the inside to block Paul Menard, and that just allows Denny Hamlin to get all the way up beside of him. Yeah, I'll tell you, Jimmy Johnson went over. He, Jimmy Johnson goes right over the nose of that 13 car. Uh, oh, I see. Wow. Boy, what, that was a pretty aggressive move by Jimmy Johnson. I'd say his car's handling pretty good if he's able to squeeze through that. Oh, Denny Hamlin's caught here four wide. The, that's definitely not where he wants to be right now. Oh, no, he's going backwards. So to speak. <laughs> now, does anyone have anything for Kyle Busch? Well, he's got a strong car. We know that. And uh, of course, there's some guys up there we don't know a whole lot about. Paul Menard, he hadn't been up there all day. And there he is running second right now, looking pretty seriously at trying to get around this 18 car. So as we wind down, we get inside 10 to go. That's move that was made with McMurray to the back bumper, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. That's what we're going to be looking for. When you see that happens, that's going to give them that momentum and that speed that they need to go up and take the lead away from Kyle Busch. There's a couple of cars I think keeping on. One is that two car. I didn't think he had a lot of damage. And right now he's moving himself back into contention. He's down on the inside right there. Daniel Suarez, he's hanging in there pretty good. Suarez back up to eighth after being a lap down. Mike, I'm going to tell you, that 48 car is not handling all that great. Uh, he's moving around a lot, and the car's moving around a lot. And here comes Ricky Stenhouse back to the front in the 17, who started on pole today. Well, Jimmy Johnson would love to have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to his rear bumper because he's got a fast race car. Keeping on that one car, Jamie McMurray, he knows how to make some wild moves that 
you know, look aggressive and risky, but he knows how to make them work. Yikes, that's not one of them. Caution. Landon Castle ah. did not make it all the way off oh, the man. racetrack. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the first car. No, one lap down. He will get the free pass. Jamie? And Dale Earnhardt Jr., it was a loose left rear, and because of that, they have a wheel spacer ready. The team just came together with a plan. Crew Chief Greg Ives came off the pit box, so they are ready to put a wheel spacer on there if that's what they need to keep the wheel tight on the next stop. What happens is the lug nuts, the, the nuts don't tighten all the way up against the wheel. They run out of threads, so you got to put a wheel spacer on to move the wheel out a little bit, and then the, then the nuts will tighten up against the wheel. The good news, Junior will be back on the lead lap. The bad news is he'll restart 23rd with a handful of laps to go. I've seen his father do that yeah. before. <laughs> Don't count him out. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, I'm anxious to ride with him. Dale Sr.'s last win came here in October of 2000. Kenny Wallace pushed him from the back all the way to the front. There's those wheel spacers. You see all different sizes. What do you, you see, Larry? Yeah, that's wheel spacers right there. And that, what that'll do, that'll put it the, the wheel further out on the lug studs, and, and the lug stud should tighten up there. They're getting them away from the, the part of the lug stud that's probably chewed up. Jamie? And remember, we've been talking about, I've been reporting that Junior's saying his car just didn't feel right today, and he just told his team, that was the feeling I've had all day long. That's it. I don't think I've had a tight left rear wheel all day long. So they're definitely ready. He said, right now, it feels a little bit tighter, but still not as tight as it should be. That's something that the, the, the tire changer should have been able to pick up on that if that was the case, because that it'll wallow the wheel out, you know, wallow the hose of the wheel out a little bit. But I'm sure there was probably a little bit of a, the wheel need to be a little bit tighter, I bet you. DW, I'm surprised too that the wheel didn't show some of that wear yeah. from it being loose. Me too. Chip Ganassi, you saw a moment ago, he has Jamie McMurray in fifth and uh, Kyle Larson in 21st. Nine laps to go in Talladega. Fox Sports supports, proud to team up with the National Alliance on Mental Illness and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness. Learn more about how to be stigma-free. Visit foxsportsupports.com. Well, boys, I didn't think it'd get any more in, 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 interesting or any more exciting, but I swear I think these last eight or nine laps are going to be crazy. Dale Jr. trying to catch up. Kevin Harvick back in. They've made several stops with the number four. One to go. They will restart with seven laps remaining. Kyle Busch chooses the outside here on this restart. I think we got some Lone Rangers up there. Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Stenhouse, Kane. Oh, Kane and, uh, and uh, Johnson might be able to work together. Yeah, that's what happened. The Kyle Busch saw that Jimmy Johnson was going to be in the outside lane with Casey Kane, his teammate, behind him. And another Chevrolet, Paul Menard, behind him. I think he wanted to, to sw switch that up a little bit, but I don't know. I think Ricky Stenhouse and Jamie McMurray are about as good of pushers as you could get. I like these two guys right here, man. I'm telling you, that 48 and that 7, we know that 17's fast. Jimmy's car is fast. You get that 17 pushed in 48, he might push him right to the lead. However, six times Talladega has produced a one-hit wonder, a driver who scored his only career win here ten times. It has produced a driver who got his first win here. Here's the half dozen that won at Talladega, but nowhere else on the cup circuit. And you look at Ricky Stenhouse up there, Ty Dillon looking for their first win. Cole Witt has a shot. Matt DiBenedetto and still on the lead lap, Joey Gase, Daniel Suarez. Great Galding, got a lot of possibilities. And so Jeff, what would you do for your first win here? For your first win ever and a win here? Oh, well, I, I know one thing. Stenhouse is hungry. He is. He sat on the pole. He's got a fast race car. He's coming off a couple of great runs. He's got confidence right now, and he will mix it up. You wait and see what happens out of him. This is a home game for Stenhouse. He's from Mississippi. Today's race is in Alabama. That's, that, that seals the deal right there. That's a done deal. <laughs> 
But where will he find friends? He is the only Ford near the front. The next one is back in 10th place. That's Almirola, then Boyer and Reagan. Kyle Busch is the only Toyota near the front. All the rest are Chevrolets in the top seven spots, except Stenhouse. Chris Buescher up there, too. Run an eighth in the 37. So let's settle this. Green flag, seven laps to go. Another great start by Kyle Busch. He was able to get that jump. Yeah, now that allows him to choose which lane he wants to protect. And he's out there a little bit. Mm, I don't like being quite that far out because you're going to get a run on you when you come off turn two back here down the back. Watch the, this row with wow, Hamlin stacked up. and McMurray. Those guys know how to generate some big pushes. Look at all the drivers trying to be a one hit wonder at Talladega. Up in the middle. And Stenhouse on the bottom with Jimmy Johnson. Don't count that five car out, Casey Kane. He knows how to get it done here, too, and he's right there. Don't count anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in it, you're gonna, you could you win it. Shot. Reminds me of the All Star race. Checkers or wreckers. Here we go. Look at that 18 car move from one side to the other. Six laps to go. He's working both sides of the street, boys. Earnhardt into the top 20, but mired in traffic. Well, Denny Hamlin's going to do this. He's going to have to do it from that third lane on the outside with only five or six to go. I tell you, it gets crazy when you're all bunched up like this. With somebody has to check. If somebody has to check up a little bit, somebody gets a little loose. There's Boyer with a bump. Here's Almirola just ahead. Who's he going to go with? Oh, a little Whoa. contact to Paul Menards. Left rear. Woo. Hang on, brother. And here they come. Five laps to go. Man, the old heart's pounding right now. I'm telling you, hands went hard pounding. You're talking about us or those guys <laughs> down there? Well, those guys, they, they got ice water in their veins, especially those at the front right now. He's banging on the bumper of Almirola, trying to move them forward. Junior, likewise, trying to make something happen. I think we're right about one thing, though. Stenhouse doesn't have any help up there right now, and that's kind of left him hanging out. See him down on the bottom. He doesn't have anybody to push him. That's the blue 17. He's got McMurray now coming up in the one. McMurray will push him. Now where, oh, this, yes. where this move is going to come from, you've got to break free of that double file. Right here where you see Ricky Stenhouse Jr., you see McMurray, those guys are sort of stalling out the ability for somebody to get a big run. So what's going to have to happen, somebody's going to have to clear them and get on the rear bumper. Somebody else, just like there with Paul Menard, if he can push Casey Kane, that'll get some energy going, and he might be able to make something happen. Boy, Johnson got a great run off turn two, but here comes that five car with a boot. Wow, a lot of Whoa. contact in the back straightaway. Look at those shoving. Push and shove, root and gouge. But get there. I'll tell you, that 70 is still pretty stout, guys. Well, that's Danny the Hamlin's fastest car the outside of the fast. 14 of Boyer here. That's going to cost Boyer some spots. I don't know if he'll clear him. Nope. Hamlin has yet to clear him. Stenhouse just needs some help. He could get it done, I think, but he just got, he finally got Boyer up behind him. I don't know if that's enough or not. Three to go. I think Stenhouse has the fastest car, but he's got to have help. He's got to make the right move. Yeah, there's just not a lot organized in that bottom lane. He's got some good pushers right there behind him. He just needs more people to get down that inside lane. Casey Kane to the five, trying to win his first restrictor plate race. Jimmy Johnson above his teammate. Oh, we got a crash on the back straightaway. Ryan Newman has brought out the caution with three to go. Boy, he the whole left side of that car is going in. I love trends. Three laps to go. 12th place Ryan Newman getting torn up in the race that will not end. <laughs> Kevin Harvick gets the free pass as they idle across the line, and we will go to overtime. The Goodyear aerial coverage. Watch, there's the 31 of Ryan Newman. 
Little contact between the 14 of Boyer and the 37 of Busher. Going, going, going. Ooh, oh, ooh, more ooh. contact. Yeah. yeah. The, that's sent. Wow, Junior, Junior just barely Junior. went by. Junior okay. missed another one. But yeah, a little that? contact between Boyer and Busher, and that sent Busher up into the left rear of the 31. Whoa, man, look how close that was. Woo. I wonder what sent Boyer up the track. Did he get a tap from Keslowski? That's what I was wondering as well. No run, no run. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I think Junior was thinking about going three wide yeah. right there to make something happen, and then they all start checking up. He's got cat-like reflexes today, man. Pit road will be open this time. See him shutting the engine down, saving some fuel for that green-white checkered. Oh, man. We just didn't need this. But now Casey Kane, Jamie McMurray, Kyle Busch, and Denny Hamlin have not been to pit road since lap 146. Now watch the red car on the inside. That's Boyer. He goes up to side draft 37 to Busher. Oh, you know, he gets contact from is that Reagan? It gets into his right rear. Turn him just a little bit. Turn him yeah, up into yeah. Busher, which turned him into Newman. That's a hard hit on the inside there on the Newman's car, too. Watch that blue car. You see that contact right yeah. there. There it is. Yep. And he was getting pushed by Keselowski. I think Junior made a great move, and I mean, Whoa. not just missing, not just missing the 31 car, but I think if he have stayed up where he was, he may have gotten wrecked. That's a hard left side lick. Pancake that one, and on the driver's side too. Four years back, you saw Ryan Newman climb out of the car, uninjured. There you see the right side damage on Boyer's Ford. So we'll go to overtime and hope to get a green white checker finish here at Talladega. One attempt with a clean restart. If the on the restart lap, if the leader reaches the overtime line in the back straightaway, then it is a clean restart and the next flag ends the race. And there is the overtime line. Most of the way down the back straightaway toward turn number three. We talked about Casey Kane trying to win his first restrictor plate race. He's currently in fourth in that number five. I mean, Paul's pushing like crazy. He's doing really good. I just can't really get to Jimmy ever to like help him or do anything. I just stay a little ways away from him. Yeah, Ted Paul, I'm next to Earl and Steve. He's just making friends with both of them. What I, I want answered is, what is Kyle Busch doing on these restarts? He, the last two oh, or three yeah. restarts, he just jumps out there and gets command of the start, and then he's able to pick and choose his lanes. You know, normally on these restarts, you'll see them race side by side, and the, the, the difference is what's happening behind them. Vince? Well, that last restart, Kyle Busch got a great push as well, and that certainly helped. And they just told him, let's do the same as before. So that would uh, lead us to believe that we'll see Kyle Busch start on the outside again. They feel like they can dictate the flow better from that position versus the inside. And as far as fuel is concerned, if you're thinking about that, he has saved at every opportunity. They say they're good to go on fuel, but just keep saving when you can because you don't know how many of these overtimes we're going to have. Thanks, Vince. One to go, and we'll get the green flag for overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Here's that last restart. It's a launch. I mean, he just gets a launch. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what kind of, yeah, a little bit of a push, but he just took oh, off. Gone, baby. I don't know if he just anticipated it a little bit better, but he did that. That's not the only, he's done that a couple of times today. We just think about the guys in front right now. Stenhouse never won a cup race. Of course, and, and, and Kyle Busch trying to get a KGR their first win of the year. You look back at Casey Kane, that five car. It's been 92 races since he last won. There are some guys up Look at Paul Menard. There's some guys up there that are hungry, man. This might just be the break that Stenhouse needed. If he can, if he can, if he can take off, 
and stay even with Kyle Busch, and Jimmy Johnson gets up there and gets to pushing him, he might be the car. Yeah, he All wants right. to create a drag race. What about Denny Hamlin back in ninth, Brad Keselowski in 14th, Earnhardt Jr. in 15th? What can they do from that far back? Yeah, which that far back is going to be hard to do very much because they're not going to have that many laps to get something done. So they're going to get bottled up in traffic most likely. Unless they do some bold Kyle Busch move around the outside. They're going to shove and gouge <laughs> and bump and bang is what they're going to do to try to get up there. All right, let's set the field for you. Kyle Busch is the race leader. His number 18 has chosen the outside lane on the restart. Ricky Stenhouse uh, to his inside. Started on pole. Looking for his first win. Mike, look who's running 10. Look who's running 11. Look who's running 12. Row two, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, teammates in Hendrick Chevrolet's in the second row. McMurray and Menard in row three in Chevrolet's. Al Marola and Kurt Busch in Fords. Denny Hamlin's Toyota and Matt DiBenedetto. And that number 32 in the top 10. Looking for a career best finish. Here is overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. The green flag waves. If the leader makes it to the overtime line, before there's a caution, this will be the last restart of the race. I'm telling you, it's like the 18 to Kyle Busch has a different second gear than everybody else. So he's restarting he's gone, first baby. gear. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 gave Ricky Stenhouse a nice push. Now he gets one from the one of McMurray, and here comes Johnson. Here they come. Here comes Casey Kane. Ah! Oh, Stenhouse did a great job to block that run that was coming. Boy, he yeah, yeah, he's going to get to the inside right here. Great move by Ricky Stenhouse. Will he clear? Clear up. Clear I think up. He clear will. up. Come on, get Not up. There. Not yet. Oh, We're past man. the overtime line. We have a race. Oh, we Next have a drag race. Next it. I tell you, I thought Stenhouse could have made a move up right there, but you can see he's pretty well. He's got some speed for the, he and the 7, 18 are pretty equal. Fastest car here carries Bush up the race. White flag trying to end a 101 race winless streak for car owner Jack Roush is Ricky Stenhouse. Look at this, four wide. Oh Everybody wants to get to the front. I just don't see how that's going to work out. Side drafter for McMurray on Casey Kane. He's going to get to the rear bumper. Argo in the middle between Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Bush. Now what Stenhouse do? Can he block? Can he block all of them coming at once? Five wide. Work it, dude. Work it. Last lap. Bang. That was that Bush into McMurray. Stenhouse gets away a little bit. Three wide. Here they come off turn four. This is the finish these fans came and stayed for. Ricky Stenhouse, the pride of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Top to bottom. Kyle Busch to the outside gets blocked by Stenhouse. Here they come. Stenhouse yes. wins it. <laughs> Woo -hoo. What a run. What a thrilling game. It's always fun to see oh, somebody good. get their first win. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Chief Brian Patty, spotter Mike Herman Jr. deserves a lot of the credit. And the fastest car here finishes first. <laughs> McMurray second, Kyle Busch, our long shot, Al Marola fourth, and Casey Kane fifth. Here's the pass. Now watch Stenhouse moves up in front of the five of Casey Kane to get this run. He gets right on the rear bumper of the 18 and he's able to get to the left rear to make this pass out. He doesn't complete it right here, but that's what generated it. Yeah, I think I think Kyle Busch was conflicted. He didn't know whether to block Stenhouse or Casey Kane. I think he felt like he had a better shot at blocking the Casey Kane and Stenhouse shot to the lead. Now this is to the white flag. That's all you want to do is just give yourself a shot. Get side by side with that leader, and then it's all about blocking that run from behind to maintain the lead. Another great, look at this run by McMurray. He gets a big push from the 41. He side drafts the five of Casey Kane, and then watch how it opens up here between the 48 and the 18. He just shoves his nose in there. My gosh, how did he make it through there? That's what Jimmy Johnson's thinking. Oh, goodness. Incredible move by McMurray. Right here. He's had criticism for being aggressive. 
Well, the, the eye of the needle opened up, and he shot right through it. I would if say. ever there's a time to be aggressive, it's right there in the last Man, lap. Man, I don't know how he made it to that. I don't know how any of them made it all the way to the finish. <laughs> and then look here. Kyle Busch has a run. He gets a side draft off McMurray. Stenhouse up to block, and then takes the short way around down to the bottom and wins it. Wow, what a finish. Great job there, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Nice job. For the 24th time, a last lap pass at Talladega for the win. And McMurray second by inches over Kyle Busch. Ricky Stenhouse taking home his first checkered flag in the Cup Series is today's Sunoco fueling victory. <laughs> he is the 11th first time winner at Talladega Super Speedway. Took him 158 starts. But Ricky Stenhouse is going to victory lane. He's the eighth driver to get his first win for car owner Jack Roush. You know, congratulations to Doug Yates and also to Robert. Uh, though you're watching, Robert. Big, big run today, buddy. Vince? What a good performance from Kyle Busch today, but he comes home third. You're leading the race down at the end. How do you decide which lane to block when they're ganging up on you like that? Uh, when they have too big of a run, you, you can't do anything about it. You know, Stenhouse got a really good run and a good push and, and got by us there. And um, then it was just trying about retaliation, getting back on, on him. And I just never had enough help from behind. It just never got together. But can't say enough about uh, this Skittles America mixed Camry. I mean, it was really fast. Guys at Joe Gibbs Racing did a great job. TRD, everyone on this motor, it was awesome. So um, we did all we could here today. It's, uh, it's all circumstantial on how you win these things. So unfortunately, our... Our circumstances didn't quite go our way, but, um, you know, we go to a, a real racetrack next week and, and try to win there. Yeah, well done. Kyle Busch, third place today. Matt? Jimmy Johnson finishes eighth. When you go back and you play it through your mind, and then you had the one car also threaded the needle, could you have thrown a block or done anything to, to advance your position, Jim? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could have defended the middle better off it, too. Um, you just don't know where they're going to go, you know, and you're busy looking in mirrors and out the windshield. And I'm trying to see where uh, the leader is and all that kind of stuff. And um, just a, a, a brave but but good move to thread the needle by the one car there. I'm um, just very proud of this this race team. We had a, a very solid race car all day long. Um, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, everybody on the slowest car, and uh, just great teammates to work out th uh, with out there. Great Chevys to work with. and. Um, we finished a plate race, and I don't even think there's a scratch on this thing. So, I mean, that's that's like a double victory, even though we finished eight. <laughs> Jamie Little's in victory lane. What a celebration as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. climbs out in victory lane for the first time. Jack Roush greeted him at the door. His girlfriend and fellow competitor Danica Patrick, the second to greet him. Ricky, two-time Xfinity Series champion. Your first start in this series was in 2011. It's been a long road to get here. What has been the biggest difference for you guys this year to finally get this win? This is for all the guys at the shop, man. Um, you know, we've been terrible for a long time. This year, every race, we're getting better and better. And uh, we knew that Talladega was a good racetrack for us. It's been a good one in the past, and man, I'm just glad we parked it for my buddy Brian Clawson. He was he was with us on that last lap, and uh, man, this fifth third bank Ford was so fast today. Qualified on the pole, got the win. Can't say enough about the guys. Uh, man, it's cool to have Jack Roush back in victory lane. Uh, Ford performance, fast and all. The, oh, Sunny D. I'm gonna have a Sunny D in the morning, maybe a little later. Um, but man, this is uh, this is cool. Closest racetrack to my hometown. And uh, man, the fans were out here this weekend. What was it like for you to drive in here, Jack Roush, the first one? He's always believed in you, never gave up on you through thick and thin, your girlfriend Danica, everything that you guys have been through. What was it like just seeing their faces? It was awesome, man. It's been a long time since I pulled into Victory Lane. I had to ask Brad Keselowski how to start a race on the pole. It's been a long time since we started from the pole there. Um, this Monster Energy Cup Series is uh, so fun to race in. And uh, just glad to see Jack smiling here in victory lane. I know he's been wanting this for a long time. So, um, man, to, to be up there with, you know, Jimmy and, and Kyle uh, racing as hard as we did. And, uh, man, we beat some good ones today. Every driver around him had won a race, won a championship. But now Ricky Stenhouse Jr. can say he is a winner.
You never forget your first time. Ricky Stenhouse and these thousands of fans at Talladega will never forget what happened here today. More after this. It is 158th career cup race for the first time in victory lane driver of the 17 Roush Fenway Ford the support for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who grew up four hours from here and called it his home track his girlfriend there's his owner Jack Roush Danica Patrick going in to congratulate him he was a 40 to 1 long shot in Las Vegas when the day began Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the favorite here at Talladega in Earnhardt country but it's Stenhouse time. As we look, you win, you're in the playoffs with Michael Waltrip. Chris Myers live here from Talladega. This is the way it stands after 10 races, and Ford has won five of the first 10 this season. And this team has just gotten better and better each week. Brian Patty, the crew chief, told me that he believes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a future superstar in NASCAR racing, and today he proved that he had what it takes to get it done on our biggest track. What a great job on those last couple of laps, holding off the field. We went to overtime, third overtime this year. Let's take a look at this uh, attempted power move in the backstretch. Well, you just, the C's are going to part slightly here, and then you force them the rest of the way open, right? Look at Jamie Mack. He just split those two cars and 
was on right on the bumper of Stenhouse as they headed down into turn three, but Bush wasn't done yet. He was coming on the outside, and there you can see Kyle. He still thinks he's going to win this race. And Jamie McMurray winds up second, and he is standing by with Chris Neville. Wow, just an amazing run there by Jamie McMurray down that back straightaway. You had a sniff at the lead there. What did you need through the tri-oval? Well, I mean, it's so circumstantial with who gets behind you and and who doesn't. Um, I was really concerned with blocking the 41 on my outside. The middle was by far the best lane for me all day long. Um, it was really close. I, I thought the 17 was going to pull out a little farther than uh, than he did, but super happy with our McDonald's Chevrolet. It, uh, this has been a really good track for me, and um, I haven't been able to finish here the last couple of years, so uh, really happy with that. We had good pit stops. Matt did a great job calling the race. Uh, guys are building really good cars, and it's you know it's, it's interesting because in years past, I feel like this is always a track that you thought you could win at and great, gain great points, and we've run so well at so many tracks this year. This was a track I just wanted to survive at so we could get to another track and race. Thanks, Jamie. Casey Kane brings it in fifth today how do you describe the final couple of laps when you're in the mix at talladega uh just trying to keep the car behind you uh trying to keep your momentum and do whatever you can i was trying to you know push whoever was in front of me and paul menard was pushing me like crazy uh, our universe chevrolet was was pretty close i had a hard time pushing people but i i could get pushed pretty well uh, i wanted to do something i felt like i could have went with ricky at one point to the left but i wasn't sure if jimmy i thought jimmy was still at my left rear so it was close, and I didn't go, but that might have got Ricky to the lead there, and then who knows where we would have ended up. But it was still a strong, strong performance for our Unifirst team, and happy to get to top five. It's been a little while. Casey Kane, fifth place. And Eric Almirola wins the Xfinity race on Saturday, and you were right there the last half of this race. What did you need that last lap? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe a, a little bit better push and maybe uh, 100, 200 more yards. Uh, great day for us. Um, all the Fords were really fast. Doug Yates obviously builds great horsepower and a solid day again for the uh, fresh from Florida uh, Ford Fusion this time. Was, we got the Ford Mustang to victory lane yesterday and uh, we got a Ford Fusion to victory lane today. Congrats to Ricky. Uh, he's been so close and they've been running a lot better this year. So uh, really happy to see them go to victory lane. But I felt really confident going into those final few restarts. I thought we were going get, to uh, get our Ford Fusion into victory lane and uh, we came up a little bit short. But Still a solid day for us, and uh, really proud of everybody at Richard Petty Motorsports. Thanks, Eric. At the end of stage two, Stenhouse was 30th, now celebrating in victory lane in the closest finish of any race this year. Nine one-hundredths of a second over McMurray, Ricky Stenhouse, victorious in Talladega.
the trophy they hand out here in made of iron, but that thing could be made of tin foil for uh, for Ricky Stenhouse <laughs> Jr. I mean, just getting your first win, he's excited to be in victory lane, the eighth different winner we've had now in the ten races this year. I got to tell you though, Chris, I won here in 2003. I still have the trophy. I don't have any of that money, but that <laughs> trophy is a big part of my life. Winning at Talladega is quite an accomplishment. And now it's on to Kansas Saturday night on FS1. Kyle Busch, you heard his comments in the close finish here. He won that race last year. Yeah, and they'll be strong there. Those Gibbs cars have run well this year. Obviously, last year they swept the month of April, so we're comparing to excellence. This year they've got good performance. Kyle almost won out at Phoenix, had a had a crash late, a restart that he couldn't uh, couldn't pull off, but that team's good. I think they'll be strong out west. Yeah, he's Kyle Busch has led in six races this year. Still the Joe Gibbs Toyotas. No victories at this point. They had five last year. Tonight on Fox, coming up, Bob's Burgers, the Simpsons, and then the last man on Earth. Victory Lane over on FS1. We hope you check it out. We'll spend more time with the background and success story of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Roush Fenway Racing. That's at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, FS1. And next Saturday from Kansas, as we mentioned, the coverage 7 Eastern on FS1 after Major League Baseball. Well, a 16-car wreck survived by Stenhouse Jr. in Victory Lane. For Michael Walter, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.